statistical, so unpredictable Here on the SNL Network Yes, that is right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another super fan takeover here on the SNL Network. And it is one of the biggest shows that we do every single year. It is a draft podcast, and this is the third draft that we have done here on the SNL Network. About a year ago, I got together with some of the super fans to draft cast members from the history of the show and build our best casts ever. If you want to go back and check that one out, that is available from last June. And then just a few months ago, we got together with this draft crew that is here tonight to draft hosts from the history of Saturday Night Live to build our perfect host draft. And that was a very fun show to do around Christmas time. So make sure to check that one out. But we are here for another special podcast today. And I'm going to explain to you all the rules of the draft. But first, I have to introduce the competitors we have with us on the SNL network today. And first up, of course, we couldn't do this draft without my man TJ Randolph. TJ, how are you? I'm feeling blessed, black and highly favored, John. I am ready to win to dominate to crush my enemies and to just be right. Because as we know, Things are always best when men are right, right? Is that, oh, is that not? Okay. <laughs> All right. Starting off, <laughs> starting off great already. I'm um, totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having to be uh, here. <laughs> Yes, for sure. Happy. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, happy 4th of July to all of those uh, celebrating in the United States uh, who are watching this today. And of course, happy Canada Day, which just passed in Canada. So uh, a lot of celebrating this weekend and hope you get to enjoy this on your long weekend. And uh, yes, TJ, happy to have you on the show. Always a wild card uh, joining us. <laughs> um, joining us next, it is the uh, it is the winner of our last draft because uh, all the fans just fell in love with the team that she drafted and she was our intern for season 47 and has since graduated to become one of our regular panelists looking forward to talking about snl with her a lot more in season 48 it is hallie doden parrot hallie how are you i'm doing good i'm interested to see if i can somehow pull off another win i'm not quite sure how i did that last time but i've got some interesting picks and i'm excited to be back yes very very excited to have you on the podcast hallie i know that the fans are rooting for you tonight so don't let them down okay <laughs> um, of course, uh, joining us on the Superfan Takeover, it is the host of all of our Superfan Takeovers, except, I guess, for the draft pods. It is uh, Sammy K. Sammy, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, it's been like a month since I've been on the feed, so it's it's been a nice break from talking SNL, but I'm excited to uh, dig into uh, this draft. I mean, there's just so many people who you'd expect to have already hosted, so they're, they're and then you're surprised when they haven't, so there's... Uh, a lot of interesting people to choose from, so I'm excited to get into it. Yeah, very pumped to have you on, Sammy, and get your picks. You always come in with very intelligent reasons for why you are making your picks, so I'm looking forward to hearing it all out. Uh, joining us on also on the podcast, of course, we couldn't do this without Nicole Rovine. Nicole, how you doing? Another intelligent Jew, just like Sammy. I'm just excited. I feel like this draft is more like endless than other drafts that we've done, so it truly feels like the... There, there's so much, so many people, and I'm. I want to. I'm. I'm like curious what I'm going to end up doing, and as I think I said last time, I'm just very fascinated to see what everybody else is going to do. Well, hi, I'm. That's okay. Right. Uh, joining us also on uh, on our draft today, uh, it is Andrew Haynes. Haynes, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing very well. Excited to be on these. I just love these big drafts where we have so many panelists on. It'll just be so exciting to you know bounce ideas off so many people. And um, you know, I feel like we're already um, setting up for an exciting day. I'm looking forward to the banter for sure. Looking forward to hearing from you all uh, podcast long, Haynes. And of course, uh, joining us is the recently married Andrew Haskell. Haskell, how are you? I'm doing good. I um leave for my honeymoon tomorrow so and i think i'm gonna need a vacation after this one i think this one could get kind of rough so i'm excited to just uh, get through this and go on vacation yeah for sure haskell who has a ring now from his wedding but not from the celtics winning the nba final so uh looking forward to seeing if you can win the nba win the, uh, the uh, draft today and you're, you're, you're miami heat won it all right Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, joining us also, last but not least, it's uh, one of the biggest sports fans that I know. It is Bill Kenny. Bill, how are you? 
I'm doing great, John. Uh, excited to be here. Uh, I took a cue from Haskell's last draft. I'm wearing a football jersey in the summer, not something I usually do, but I'm uh, ready to roll. Uh, we're ready for Haley this time, so uh, she's not going to sneak up on us. Yes, 100%. We are all prepared to see what she can do on this draft. So uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's get to our never hosted draft today. And what is that, you may ask? Well, listeners, I'm going to explain to you how this is going to work. This is an idea that I think is very fun. Every single week we do the podcast, we always have people saying, oh, I really wish this person could host SNL. They've never hosted. How come SNL isn't picking them? Well, this is the podcast where we're going to choose hosts who have never hosted SNL and fill out our fall 20 uh 2022 lineup so season 48 we're going to assume like last season that there will be nine shows in the fall we don't have the full fall schedule yet but we'll fill out those nine weeks of shows and there's going to be of course eight teams that are going to get filled out so 72 potential hosts will be drafted and you may be asking yourself well there are a million people out there billions of people who have never hosted saturday Night live so how can we you know get the pool down well here's a couple of ground rules for the podcast number one they have to be alive the person that you pick so they have to still be here as of this recording right now if somebody unfortunately passes away that we drafted between the time we recorded this and the time it is released i apologize to all the listeners but as of now, uh, Sunday, June 26th, I'll just say what it is, at 2.23, TMZ, if you haven't announced that they died, they're eligible for the show. So um, Eastern time, 2.23 Eastern. Eastern, Eastern time, yes, yes. That's just so want to cover crazy. all of our bases. <laughs> yes. So, so just want, you just you never know. So just want to make sure. Uh, so yeah, no no Moses to be drafted, no Jesus. Uh, anybody, ha they have to be alive for this show. So, what about Shrek? Uh, maybe what? Uh, yeah, no fictional characters. That would be another one that is not eligible for the uh, draft. So apologies to our Shrek fans out there. Um, and of course, uh, this was a question that was asked uh, by some of the panelists. Uh, no duos. I know that we've had some duos in the history of the show. Uh, Tina and Amy recently hosted. Uh, we have the Smothers Brothers um, back in the day. So, you know, they hosted tw two seasons in a row. Um, so we cannot draft duos today. We want to have everybody draft one person for the show. Um, I know it was also asked, can your person be performing double duty? So yeah, of course, you can pick somebody who's been a musical guest or has been a cameo on the show. We may assume that they also might be the musical guest today, but we are here to draft hosts. That's what we're doing. So uh, if I draft example Halsey, who is not eligible because she's already hosted the show, we can assume potentially that she will also be doing double duty, but that is not what we're here for today. Okay. Competitors, uh, just give me a thumbs up. Everybody cool with the rules of the draft today? Okay, that's great. So the only thing we have to do before we get started is we have to decide the order of the draft. And I think that it's only fair that the winner of the previous draft decides the order for the next draft. So that's how we're going to do things from now on. So that you know gives us some extra stakes going into each draft that we move forward. So that means that Hallie, who got the most votes last time, will be picking the order of the draft this time. So Hallie, what order will we be drafting in? And just to clarify, the order voted by the audience, not by us. So we can't use against her that we say voted for her to win or something. If we, there was a winning, like say we were all voting and we could vote for anyone other than ourselves, we didn't do that. So just, just I'm just throwing everything out there. It's not like Hallie now can say, well, since so-and-so voted for me, I'm going to pay back. So that's, I just wanted to bring that point up. This was not us voting. Got it. Okay. So yes, the social, the social media audience will see all the teams after this and will vote and then we'll pick the winner and that person will decide the order for the next draft. So Hallie, let's get your order for the draft. Who's going first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Okay. I think... I think I'm going to put Nicole first. Oh, my God. Thank I, you. Thank <laughs> you we're so going to, you know, girls, we're going to band together. <laughs> we have to. Um, what, what other choice do we have in this world, you know? Exactly. <clears throat> Anyways, and then, thank you. Bill, Bill, I'll move you up to second. I'm going to okay. stay in my Much spot, I think. I like my spot. I'm going to remain here. And I'm going to move. Hmm. I'm going to move Haynes next. Okay. I'll take it. And then All right, I'm going to switch spots. John and Haskell. Okay. And, and that's, that's my order. That's the order. Okay. So the order <laughs> is Nicole, <laughs> Nicole, then Bill, then Hallie, then Haynes, 
Haskell, Sammy, myself, and then TJ will be last. It is a snake draft. So on the way back in round two, TJ will pick first and Nicole will have the last pick in the second round. Okay. So let's get this draft started. If you are watching this show as it's going, we want to get your comments in the chat about every single pick as we build these teams. So Nicole Rovine, you have the first overall pick in the Never Hosted Draft. Who are you going? Mm. Oh, this power. Let me just soak it in for a second. It feels really good. Really good. And I'll remember this. So if you vote for me, a vote for me is a kind of a vote for Holly if we're thinking long term here. That's all I'm going to say about that. Anyways, my first pick is someone who I would guess three out of the other seven probably would pick this person. I don't know which ones, but this is this is a first round pick for sure. Someone who a lot of us have wanted to host, not for very long, but the time that we wanted her to host, we wanted it so badly, and it's just very deserved. She's expressed interest in hosting. She has cameoed on the show very recently. Um, she has in- expressed interest in being a fan of the show with or without her being an actress who could potentially host it, which to me is so important. I want hosts who, before being good at hosting or, or even wanting to host, I want them to be a fan of the show and, and watch it and have watched it for a long time. You know, even like a connection to New York, which this person has, all those sorts of things. Um, you know, brownie points for it's a it's a sibling. This person has two siblings who have hosted, um, who would, if they hadn't hosted, they would not be eligible today because they hosted together when they hosted. Um, and that was really iconic. And they're, they're, this person's siblings played a character who was like one of my absolute favorite characters growing up on television and meant so much to me. So this person has, has also mean so much to me. And I, I just think it's her time. It's time for Elizabeth Olsen to host the season 48 premiere season premiere of Saturday Night Live. Okay, so Nicole goes with Elizabeth Olsen for the first overall pick. Elizabeth Olsen, who did appear in the Benedict Cumberbatch episode, but did not actually host the show this season, as many people would have thought. That's a very good pick, and one that I assume was on a lot of people's draft boards for this particular draft. Uh, TJ, can I head it over to you? Was Elizabeth Olsen on your draft board? God damn it, Nicole. (laughs) Just Of course she was on my draft board, John. Oh, this is an excellent pick. She's a queen, and Hallie, no, 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 I'm, don't you smile either. I, I, want, I want the smoke. But this is a phenomenal pick. She's an incredible actress, charismatic, wonderful. Watching this person in interviews, seeing them act, they are a tour de force, and we love Elizabeth Olsen. Anytime she shows up in anything, just heard that little cameo. I've watched that understudy sketch a million times. I mean, it's also just a great sketch, but this is a fantastic p- pick. I'm furious because I know Nicole and I have very similar picks, and this strikes fear into my heart. But honestly, uh, kudos. Granted, you didn't pick who I think you were going to, though, Nicole. I thought you were going to snatch someone else, but you. I you know who you up. think I was going to snatch. I, I, you know, <laughs> I know who you're talking about. You but this person, up. I we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to you're it. You're gonna, you're gonna pick the person who we're both thinking of. TJ and I, I find it fascinating, Holly, that you put us at opposite ends because we, we are going to be probably more similar than any other two. I think today, that's, I'll, yeah. I'll guess that. I know yeah. exactly who you're talking about, and it's my number two. So. Please don't. Please don't. Oh, All right. I, well, I TJ has two more picks before it gets back to you, Nicole. Right. So that hurts. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we will see. But uh, of course, so Elizabeth Olsen just kicks off our draft and it's over to Bill Kenny for the second pick in the first round. Well, that's a great pick. Uh, she would not have been my uh, season opener host, but she definitely was on my list. Uh, I'm going with somebody who's probably on a lot of lists as well. Uh, it's way overdue. He's a former writer of on SNL, uh, had a lot of problems with uh, the show. But if you listen to the fantastic Fly on the Wall podcast, which is the only other podcast you should be listening to other than ours, uh, he's kind of made his amends with it. He's one of the biggest stars in the country, uh, has one of the hottest shows that's uh, doing its finale in August. So it would be perfect for him to come in in October-ish. I'm going with Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, this is a great pick, Bill, and one that I'm sure was on a lot of people's list. Bob Odenkirk, obviously a very famous writer at Saturday Night Live, uh, as you mentioned, was just on the Fly on the Wall podcast with David Spade and Dana Carvey, talking a lot about his experience and uh, and obviously that and him being in good health. I mean, there has been some health issues with Bob Odenkirk lately, and uh, glad that he's doing all right. And uh, for him to return to Saturday Night Live, we've seen a lot of very fun returns in the last few years. I think this would be a great return to see. Uh, Haynes, any thoughts on Bob Odenkirk? Any pick by Bill here? 
Well, obviously he was on my list. If everyone remembers when we recorded the little promos leading up to the holiday episode, uh, talking about what our wish was, uh, my wish was that Bob Odenkirk would host. So I kind of already picked him, but that's okay, Bill. Um, and uh, so it's a fantastic pick. I mean, Better Call Saul is amazing. Obviously, he's been in a ton of amazing things throughout his career. If you're a fan of comedy, then you're probably a fan of uh, Bob Odenkirk. If, if you grew up watching comedy in the in the you know late 90s and into the 2000s. So uh, it's a fantastic pick. I would have loved to have had him. I expect that's the way a lot of picks will go today. We have to get through 54 of these. So I imagine that there's going to be a lot of um, overlap. It's a great pick. It's a great pick. I think 72. I think that's the number that we have to do. But yes, uh, there's going to be a lot of people math. Uh, being picked today. Yeah, math, hashtag math. Oh, I, for, uh, I thought we were six people on this episode. I forgot. Uh, yeah, and now there's eight. Weird. No. Which did you forget about Haynes? I thought there was six, so there's eight. Yeah, I didn't know. Exactly. Um, okay, all right. So uh, here to defend her crown is Hallie. So Hallie, make your first pick in the first round. Okay, this was not originally my first pick when I started planning for this. Uh, this person was kind of actually towards the back of my list, but I've had my mind changed very dramatically. I believe this person is one of the best comedians ever. Um, I love everything he does. I actually saw him tape his Netflix special last night, and I was like, yep, that's my number one pick. I have to pick Nick Kroll. Okay, so Hallie picks Nick Kroll. Uh, was Nick Kroll on anybody else's draft board for today? I had him towards the back of mine. Okay. Yeah, awesome. same, here. Okay. same. Uh, yeah, I, I think, um, like, 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 you know, like we said, probably towards the, maybe the back of draft boards. I think he's a phenomenal sketch performer. Um, uh, and just in terms of having connections to the show, having connections to comedy and sketch comedy, like probably another guy who's probably overdue. Um, I don't know if I'd have him as he slotted in as a season premiere kind of guy. Um, but kind of a mid season come in probably have one of the better episodes of a season because he is such a seasoned um, sketch performer and probably even probably connections we don't know about as the public with kind of some SNL performers. So a uh, good pick for what will probably be a good host. I think it's a really good pick, obviously, uh, you know, most famous for Big Mouth, but uh, known for a lot of things, Nick Kroll. So I think that he would be a great pick. I think the cast would absolutely love him and, and very surprised that he has never hosted Saturday Night Live. So uh, Nick Kroll goes out in the first round. All right, Haynes, uh, your Bob Odenkirk pick was picked earlier in the draft by Bill Kenny. So where are you going to go for the fourth pick in the first round? Well, I feel like I'm going to you know, steal a pick from a lot of folks here. This person should have hosted, uh, you know, quite a while ago. She has just been in a ton of stuff lately. I grew up with her in the 90s. Um, you know, my mother was a teacher. So during the summer, she was home and I meant she was in control of the TV. And so every day I grew up uh, watching these southern 30 somethings on a show called designing women and that is where i fell in love with jean smart she's amazing and obviously between uh you know the watchmen and hacks and mayor of east town i mean she has just been pumping out golden content there's no reason she shouldn't have been on already i hope i really really hope we get to see her this season that's going to be my pick jean smart that is a really fun pick to go with Jean Smart. I know that she is super popular. I actually remember watching her in 24, my favorite show of all time. Uh, and she was amazing in that back in the day. So, uh, Nicole, you seem furious yeah, about furious. this. Yeah, I'm furious. So, I, I'm so, furious. Uh, give, I'm your, really give your piece. I mean, I'm glad that in an alternate timeline, and by that I mean the wrong timeline because it's not my timeline, I'm glad that there is a timeline where she hosts the season premiere. It's so deserved. It would be good timing. You know, Hack Season 2 premiered, and it, it had a pretty – quick rollout it was two episodes a week so it was like a, under a month really um but now she's just kind of basking in it doing some emmy stuff you know heading towards her second consecutive emmy um and she's had emmys before that she's just like having such a moment is the perfect person to host because she's she's had such an illustrious fabulous career and like it's even cliche at this point to say oh now she's getting the attention she deserves because She's been working for so long and doing great things for so long, but like we're really in in the genesons or the smartisans, if you will. So perfect pick. I'm very sad. Very, she's super high on my list, and um, a little. I mean, that that's uh, that hurt. I don't know if I'll be hurt that much, and even TJ probably won't hurt me that much. And I expect TJ 
to uh, it's going to get personal with me and TJ. So that says a lot. Whew. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's a whole thing about Gene, as we would say on the SNL network. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Askel, over to you for the fifth pick in the first round. Yeah, for my premiere, man, I got a list of sketch icons, comedy icons that I'm just like, how have they not hosted before? And I was like, how do I, how do I move somebody above all of that? Uh, so I decided uh, not to pick one of them. I want a premiere that's going to stop the world a little bit and get people to stop and, and really watch. So how am I going to get eyes on the product for this premiere? I'm going to go with none other than number 44, Barack Obama to host my premiere. Oh my gosh. Uh, the, he was on my list as well. I'm, it seems like he was on a lot of your lists. Uh, I was thinking about this as well, Haskell, about a president one day hosting SNL. And if he was going to be doing this, I know he, him and Michelle have this production company that they're working on. I think Will Forte is actually the first uh, actor who was signed for a show on their company coming up. So that's a little some fun SNL news. So uh, yeah, I mean, Barack Obama would be a great fit. He has appeared on Saturday Night Live before. He was in a very famous cold open. So um, that would be a very fun choice um sammy what do you think about the choice for haskell to take barack obama here i mean he did not overhype that he was going for someone big when he was uh, prefacing his pick uh definitely you know was on my list not super high on my list but is something i would love to see maybe you know would be somewhat uh uh, not it would not be controversial, but you know it would rile people up, and I think that is um, you know cool. Um, <laughs> so no, I, I think it's a it's a solid pick for sure. Yeah, TJ, you doing okay over there? No, not emotionally, John. I'm furious. It was he was in my top. He, he was he was up. That is a fantastic pick, and I hate you for picking such a great one. Oh, I thought oh, I'm gonna be so sneaky. No one's even gonna know that I'm gonna do this. And you, wow. Let let it just be known. I picked in the bottom of the draft, both of the other drafts. So it's nice to make some hearts break in the middle of the draft for one. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, for sure. I don't sure. know if I would recover from this. Yeah, I think uh, SNL would have to do some type of music video instead of a comeback Barack. It would be a welcome back Barack to have him on the show. So uh, that would be a lot of fun. Okay, Sammy K, you are up with the sixth pick of the first round. Give us your first pick. Yeah, let me just tell you where I'm at mentally. You know, there's been a couple of rounds here where my number one. Sammy, pick where are you at taken, mentally? Uh, yeah, my number one pick has been taken multiple times here, so we're we're going down a little bit. But I'm still very, very excited to be able to pick this person, someone who going into last season I was very confident um, would either host or even host the season premiere. Uh, this is someone who um, has been in a lot recently and. You know, we alluded to the fact, or maybe we didn't, that, you know, last time when we drafted, you know, I was very, very precise about, you know, the calendar and everything like that. I'm not trying to be as tied down to that this time, but this does fall into that bucket of uh, this person has a big movie coming out in September on my birthday that I'm very, very excited about. So I am going to pick uh, up and coming star Florence Pugh for the season premiere. Yes, that is a great pick and continuing the trend that we've seen in Saturday Night Live of a lot of Marvel hosts coming in to SNL. So, uh, Bill, what do you think about Sammy's pick? I like the pick. Uh, while I secretly hope that there's not as much Marvel, I mean, it's kind of hard to avoid with Elizabeth and Florence. Um, and we'd get the probably added bonus of getting Zach Braff in a cameo. So that would be uh pretty phenomenal as well. So I like this pick a lot. Yes. Uh, Nicole, you have a question for the group. I do. I mean, we, we don't know where they'll, where they'll be by then. Zach Braff and Florence Pugh. I'll just say that. We don't know. Um, but my question is, were you satirizing Olivia Wilde calling Florence Pugh an up and coming rising star when she's been a star for many years? And she thinks Olivia thinks she is going to make her a star with this vehicle. That, uh, movie I was I, I was not. I think uh, so. You know, I just like, kind of roasted yeah, you for yeah, calling her. Yeah. that. she's been a star. Oh, okay, okay. She is someone. She's hosting the season premiere of SNL. I don't think we have to argue yes. over her being. A yeah, star. who yeah. is she's a Olivia star? Wilde. She's someone. Olivia Wilde. She's someone. Hey, she's a, good, okay. a star test. Uh, sorry, not to point my finger. A star test for me is if I were to ask my mom right now who Florence Pugh is, 
she would not know who Florence Pugh is. If I mentioned maybe a couple movies that she's been in recently, then maybe she'd be like, oh yeah, that girl. So I think she is still, but she has been nominated for an Oscar. So, right. Yeah, it was go. just funny because Olivia did that recently. Um, and it just, you had kind of the same vibe. You were, you were it was the same vibe. So I was like, is that a parody or are you just- oh, Let's just go back Olivia's? and say, yes, that was intentional. Sure, sure funny, yeah. Woody. Okay. That's pretty wild. Okay. Um, they, let's talk about somebody who I am going to take with the seventh pick in the first round. And this is somebody who, uh, my mom definitely knows who he is because, uh, you know, when we opened up season 47, we had Owen Wilson coming to host and everyone was like, wow. I mean, Owen Wilson, like, shouldn't he have host a long time ago or what, why is he hosting now? And I'm sort of, you know, feeling like this person should have hosted a long time ago, uh, could have hosted really in any season of the show, but he probably has the biggest movie of the summer. And I'm going to go with Mr. Tom Cruise to host Saturday Night Live for the premiere of season 48. I think it's a big name to get people back into the show the first week. I mean, he may not be the best sketch comedy performer, but to get people back into the show, I think it's a great start to the premiere of season 48. And I think, uh, you know, he's definitely at the top of my draft board. So, Hallie, what do you think of that pick for Tom Cruise? I definitely considered it as an option, um, but I I don't know why. My entire life, I've always had like some vendetta against Tom Cruise, <laughs> and I think it's because my mom hyped him up so much when I was growing up, and then I saw Tom Cruise, and I was like, what is going on? Um, but I considered it as like a big showstopper, because everyone in the world would probably watch that, but I do think that's a really solid premiere. I think that would get so many people to watch. Yeah, we're bringing in the ratings with my team. So uh, we will see who comes in next. And uh, that is the seventh pick in the first round. And now we have the final pick in the first round. And then TJ will kick off the first pick of the second round. So TJ, who is your first pick that you're going with? Well, you all messed up. All right. It was sitting right in front of you because this person is royalty. Well, not like a literal royalty, but like acting royalty. You're drafting the queen? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Queen Elizabeth. Okay, uh, <laughs> here's why she cracked me up. As of June 26th thing about, you know, alive. Uh, uh, Depending on what you read. Uh, let's not tell you what this again. Depending on what your media yeah. outlet of choice is. Oh, my yeah. God. Nicole has been giving us health checks of people in the background just to make sure that they're still alive at the time of drafting. <laughs> okay. But this person is royalty. This person is iconic. This person has decades of acting under their belt. Oscars galore. This person would crush it. Honestly, they don't need SNL. SNL needs them. And it's not that this person is like, I don't know if they've ever expressed in interviews doing it, but we know that it would absolutely crush because she is a queen. And the fact that no one picked her, even though she's been on decades of who should host SNL lists, you all messed up. I'm picking Meryl Streep to open my season. An absolute queen, tour de force of acting, to come in and kill. Honestly, the show might be too good. Maybe she's too good for SNL, but she's good enough for to be the first pick of my draft. Yeah, it's it's a great pick. Uh, I'm sure Meryl Streep was on a lot of people's boards. Uh, she's somebody who, uh, you know, you just would have always assumed had hosted Saturday Night Live at some point and for whatever reason never got the opportunity to do so or never chose to do so. And uh, she will be hosting TJ's premiere. Bill, what do you think of that pick? I love it. Uh, it as, as you alluded to as well, John, you know, there are so many people who have not hosted that you would have assumed at some point, you know, that have been around since the 70s or the 80s and very famous. Um, and you wonder why some of them didn't. Uh, I'm sure she was approached at some point. Uh, but maybe this is the right time for her. So it's it's a great pick. Yeah, really excellent pick, TJ. So the first round is through. We have all of the premieres from the entire panel. Nicole chose Elizabeth Olsen. Bill went with Bob Odenkirk. Hallie went with Nick Kroll. Then we had Haynes going with Gene Smart. We had uh, President Barack Obama going to Haskell's team. Sammy started things off with Florence Pugh. I chose Tom Cruise to host my premiere, and TJ went with Meryl Streep. So a lot of heavy hitters going in the first round of the draft. Let's kick off our second round of the draft. TJ, who was the first pick of the second round? Uh, I've been struggling a bit with this pick because uh, for some reason the black person is in the back of the butt, this metaphorical bust of this draft. But I can I can I can I can deal with it knowing I get another pick, you know, even though I'm in the back. It, but it's okay. 
this person, I wanted to go with somebody a little problematic, but I was going to zig, but instead I'm going to zag with another tour de force actor who we have wanted to see grace the SNL stage for decades. This person is also royalty. I could give the same exact speech. However, this the only difference with this person is they only recently got uh, you know the respect put on their name from the Oscars. Uh, I'm going with a king, Leonardo DiCaprio, to host my second episode. That is a great pick. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio has also led the leaderboards of people who have never hosted the show, but he did appear in a monologue once upon a time, and it was a very big deal, and he did a great job on it, and I think that it would be great to see Leonardo DiCaprio host the show. Sammy, was Leo on your board? Uh, Leo was definitely on my board. Um, one of my favorite actors, Jonah Hill, he obviously made an appearance in his monologue back in the day doing the uh, I'm a king of, king of the world uh, parody um, from Titanic. Uh, I mean, that's a really solid pick. I mean, I think Leo, for as much as we know him as a dramatic actor, he is also hilarious. I think Wolf of Wall Street is one of the best comedies of the last, you know, 10 years. So he can do physical comedy. He's a very funny guy. I do think it would be interesting to see if he can translate translate that to SNL. Um, but I guess there's only one way to find out. So I think it's a, a solid pick. My reasoning was picking someone who I knew people would want to see rather than someone I would want to start the season. So those two heavy hitters back to back, we've wanted to see them host for years. Who's not watching that? For sure. Meryl Streep and Leonardo DiCaprio, really strong choices from TJ there. And now it is over to me for my second pick and the second pick of the second round. And uh, I'm going to choose somebody who I think is growing into one of the biggest stars in the entire world. Obviously, I started things off with Tom Cruise and Tom, uh, you know, has been known for decades. But this is, uh, you know, someone on a little bit of the younger side, but uh, known for Ozark and inventing Anna and then potentially being in the Madonna biopic coming up. Give me Julie. Julia Garner to host the second episode of the season. I think that is the path to build a great start of the season. So I'm going with Julia Garner to start that. Uh, Nicole, thoughts on Julia Garner going here early very on? Very good. Yeah, very good pick. She was, I, I really wanted and thought we would see her in the spring. So I feel like maybe she's just too busy. She's doing so much stuff right now. And um, I think the second that she can get on SNL has the time for it. I, I, that's when I want to see her on. Um, I Yeah, she's so talented. She is uh, allegedly, as of right now, she's the pick to play Madonna. So I think that um, now now that that's true, I, I wonder if it'll we might not see her on SNL until maybe that's being promoted just because they're, the film, whatever, I think that's going to be starting soon. But... I'm a big fan. She was really high on my list and she's funny. Like she can do everything. And she's one of those like really serious, good actors who can take material that is like, like dramatic and, and intense and make it like take it so seriously that it's so hilarious, you know, and like that type of person on SNL is always fun and like a welcome surprise. And she's shown her comedy chops, you know, in inventing it. Mm, inventing Anna. Um, that wasn't me trying to do the inventing Anna accent. That was just me choking on something. But um, anyway, I love her. High on my list. Yeah, everybody wanted to know why why I stopped for a second. It was just a little. Anyways, got it. got it. Uh, okay. Well, my team is Tom Cruise and Julia Garner to kick off my season forty eight. Sammy, can you top that? You started with Florence Pugh, and where are you going to go next? See, John, I feel like we for these first two episodes are kind of flip-flopping where you got your, your huge kind of star for the first one, then maybe more of the up-and-comer. Sorry to use that word again. Um, in the second uh, slot, uh, I'm going to do the opposite. This is, a, this is a big name. This is someone who – some of my favorite people who host SNL are uh, serious, dramatic actors who you never see really do comedy, um, and then they go on SNL and they completely surprise you, even though you shouldn't be surprised because they're great actors – but, you know, they're able to do the comedy. People that this person reminds me of is like when Adam Driver has become one of my favorite hosts of the last couple of years. Willem Dafoe last season was such a, an awesome surprise as well. And again, someone you think would have hosted by now. This person is definitely cut from that same cloth. They have a big movie coming out uh, this summer, which, you know, could be the biggest movie of the year. Could the throne top gun? We're not sure. Um, so I think it would be relevant for them to finally host 
uh, this season. Uh, and I, I know people are going to call me a Marvel shill, but he's in a Marvel movie. It's Christian Bale for my second pick. Okay, the star of the upcoming Thor movie coming out very soon. So Christian Bale coming in to host Saturday Night Live for Sammy's team. Haskell, what do you think of that pick from Sammy? I He was leading me down a path of thinking it was going to be somebody else. Um, but uh, yeah, Christian Bale, I, I, I agree with everything he said where I think um, I think he would let some weird stuff out. Like he's, he's such a dedicated, fantastic actor that I think he would take these three minute sketches and just chew the scenery and have a lot of fun. So uh, a pick that I would really love to see come true. Okay, so uh, Christian Bale coming in to host Sammy's second episode of the season. And Haskell, you kick things off with President Barack Obama coming in to host your premiere. So how can you top that for episode number two? How do you top that? I mean, viewership's going to drop. It was Obama. But, uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for TJ went for uh, royalty of the big screen. Um, I'm going to go with absolute royalty of television royalty of sketch comedy one of the greatest to ever do it and just to make sure people turn in we're gonna break a record with the oldest snl host of all time the one and only carol burnett <laughs> damn it yeah i had carol burnett definitely high up on my board and this is something this is something off of this draft i've been advocating for for a while i really hope that snl finds a way to make this happen that would be incredible haynes what do you think of Hassel going with carol burnett here well it's a hilarious pick uh since you know i, I think lauren said that snl was supposed to be everything that the carol burnett show wasn't um, or something like that so uh it's hilarious a lot of people have wanted it for a long time i mean she is amazing i would love it especially at this age um i just think it would be glorious actually so yeah it's a great pick and she's uh somebody who has not appeared on snl except to come into the good nights of the harry anderson episode in 1985 she was watching saturday Night live and was brought up on stage for the good nights so a little fun fact about carol burnett and potentially will we see a betty white style special for carol burnett coming up soon uh i would hope so so that would be a lot of fun all right let's head to the back half of the second round and kick things off with haynes whose premiere was hosted by gene smart yeah so you know, I'm in a little bit of a funny position right now. I, you know, there's still so many people to choose from. And honestly, I would like to pick every member of the cast from Barry. I feel like they're all so good. Um, so, you know, I think the whole world just loves Henry Winkler. Like he would be, he would be amazing. Um, don't get upset yet, Bill. Uh, but I think, you know, Anthony Corrigan, just he steals every scene he's in. He is a master. He's unbelievable. The thing is, I love classic character actors. And so one of my favorite actors of all time is Stephen Root. And I would love to have Stephen Root host this show. I'm taking you guys for a little bit of a ride here uh, because I feel like, you know, th there's, listen, you might draw a little bit. You might draw some more people with Henry Winkler. I think people who just love laughs, you know, I mean, how could you not be attracted to Anthony Corrigan? He's so good. Uh, but Stephen Root has never hosted the show. And he is, you know, it's not like the only films I watch are Coen Brothers, even though Stephen Root and John Turturro, I do think, are some of the greatest character actors of our generation. But so I'm leaving plenty of Barry cast for other people to take. So I promise I won't have more than one Barry cast during the first nine episodes. But I'm going with Stephen Root. Okay, so Haynes is going ahead with Stephen Root, uh, obviously known for Barry, also Office Space and King of the Hill. Uh, has many, many uh, credits to his name. But uh, yeah, this this was quite the ride that you took us on, Haynes, and <laughs> very interesting. Anyone else have Stephen Root on their board? Bill, all right, let's get your thoughts on it. Definitely. And I'm very mad at you for making me show one of my picks. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Stephen Root, uh, you know, I got to know him on news radio, of course, uh, one of the best characters in a TV show of the last 25 years as Jimmy James. And of course, Dodgeball uh, was fantastic and so many other things, Office Space. 
um, yeah, I mean, Barry, you could you could have five weeks of uh, Barry actors host the show, and I'd be fine with that. So uh, great pick, and uh, he was further down on my board, but uh, very nice pick. Great pick, Haynes. All right, Hallie, you kick things off with Nick Kroll. Where are you going to go next for your pick for the second episode of the season? Okay, so I'm going not for so much the what would people watch, but what do, what do I, I selfishly want? strategy um and i'm not going for the super realistic pick here do i think this happened probably not but this is a snl cast member that we could have had that we almost had that i kind of wish we had and i'm gonna have to go with stephen colbert for this one wow all right so stephen colbert goes to hallie it's a great pick over here stephen colbert a former writer on the show obviously has a lot of credits in sketch comedy and is hosting uh you know one of the biggest talk shows in the world. Could he make the transition from CBS to NBC for SNL? Would be interesting and definitely something that we would be talking about all week long. Sammy, what do you think about Stephen Colbert hosting the second episode of the season from Hallie? Uh, I would love to see that in a reality where there's not corporate uh, rivalries between you know networks. But you know, this is a draft where we you know we're picking Tom Cruise, who's someone who. Uh, is, is he going to want to spend the week at uh, Studio 8H? I don't know. So our dreams can become reality in the draft. Stephen Colbert is maybe my favorite late night host right now. I think Seth Meyers is probably number one, but he's a close number two. He's very funny, has a long history of sketch comedy, as you said. Um, is also um, in the TV funhouse, uh, ambiguously gay duo, right? So he has a history with yeah. the show. Um, so I think it, it makes sense, and I would definitely be – um, pleasantly surprised if we saw that announcement for next season. I, I think it's a good pick. It's a really great pick. And yes, I was going to mention that part of the ambiguously gay duo, which would be interesting to see how they would do that nowadays. But I think that would be, uh, you know, Stephen Colbert would find his way to do that for sure. So uh, Hallie's team kicks off things with Nick Kroll, then heads to Stephen Colbert. Bill's team started off with Bob Odenkirk, a former writer at the show. And uh, some of his picks have been revealed by Haynes, but we'll see if he's going to go with them or not. So, Bill, let's get your pick in the second round. Well, we all know SNL's penchant for Broadway. Um, and she is one of the biggest stars from Hamilton, uh, the original cast. Uh, and she is Peacock adjacent on the fantastic Girls 5 Ever show. I'm going with uh, Renee Elise Goldsberry as my number two. Yeah, that is a very fun pick. Renee Elise Goldsberry over to Bill Kenny for his second show of the season. Nicole, was she on your list? She wasn't on my list, but as someone who the second you started describing her, I was like, that's a good pick. So now that you said it, I'm like, she definitely would have been like top half of my list. I am such a fan of hers. I'm like a Hamilton, one of those nerds. And I think that Girls 5 Eva is such a perfect kind of vehicle for her and all her talent. So SNL is feels like a very logical step, realistic and also cool and inspiring. Ariana DeBose really showed that SNL should have more Broadway people on. Um, they just know how to put on a show in, in a different way than people who spend more time, you know, on TV and movies and things. It's just like that live energy. You cannot replicate and other than someone who has that Broadway. So I love that pick. I, I wish she was on my list. For sure. And Girl, Girls 5 Eva, obviously uh, on Peacock now and has a ton of connection to Saturday Night Live through Tina Fey, uh, Robert Carlock, and of course, Jeff Richmond does the music for that show. Paula Pell, former writer, the star of that show as well. So um, yeah, just a lot of fun connections. Definitely a possibility for Renee Elise Goldsberry to host Saturday Night Live in the future. Will she do it? We will see. Okay, Nicole, let's finish off the second round of the draft. And then, of course, you have the first pick in the third round. Yes. Okay, it's all, it's back to me. Okay, so this is who I thought TJ was going to steal from me because we talk, TJ and I talk about this person pretty often. We're, we're both huge fans and someone who has shown so much comedic talent, comedic sensibility is not by trade a, com a comedian or even an actor, but has shown that their com comedic, talents, I think was, is really a big part of his kind of rise and the reason that he was able to be so successful and pave such a, a lane for himself um, was being funny and knowing how to be funny. This is someone who who is described as like in meetings with his PR and his team, you know, it's 
um, social media people even, it's this is someone who usually like the other people are the ones who say, no, maybe the, you know, the period should go there. That's funnier. Maybe you should capitalize this. This is the people telling the people around him. No, this is what's funnier. You know, this is what sticks. And so he is hilarious. He's, I think, more than being a talented musician. First and foremost, the way I think of this person is funny, way more, of course, really gifted singer, writer, everything, but funny first to me and um, has appeared on the show and as a musical guest um, has been mentioned on the show has been, there's been an impression of him on the show. Um, He's very just primed to do this. I feel Um, was in a pre-taped, a pre-taped song that we were talking about that is relevant right now to the month that we are in as of recording. And in a few days, won't be the month that I'm referring to. Um, and that's Lil Nas X. It's time. It's time. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, Lil Nas X coming in. And Lil Nas X was the musical guest in the season 46 season finale. And uh, I know that he brought the ratings for that show. He certainly brought the ratings for the podcast we did that week on the SNL Network. So um, would love, obviously, Lil Nas X to host for multiple reasons. But uh, he could be very fun, one of the biggest up-and-coming stars of the world. And really, uh, just an excellent, excellent artist beyond all the music, too. So um I would love to go around and talk to a couple of people about this. So TJ, I know you're dying inside. How do you feel about this? I'm never going to emotionally recover from this. I've, I've been hurt once, twice during this recording. And now a third time. You had chances. You went Oscar. I you did. Oscar, I did. Like, but I didn't think I, anyone I would take him. For you after that. No, no, it's fine. No, it's going fine. Meryl and Leo for your first and second picks. I have no sympathy for for this. Come on. <laughs> you know what? Come you on. know what, ma'am, 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 I have the floor. I have the floor, please. <laughs> <laughs> I I messed up. I, I I didn't think he would be a first pick for this group. I really thought Nicole, you were gonna zig and then you zagged, and this 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 is on me. It's it's on me, and I I accept I it accept that I messed up as the biggest as Lil Nas X fan on the entire SNL team of every person that's ever podcasted. This is this is a mess up on my part. I feel like I just betrayed my own family. Like oh my god, this. I never. I did not live with this. So I did. I will. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Haynes, did you have Little Nas X on your board? I did, and for exactly the same reasons as Nicole. I just think that first and foremost, he is a performer. He's just. He just seems like the person who could come out, do a great job with the monologue, do a great job in um, sketches. Obviously, we've seen him, uh, you know, in a sketch before, and so. Yeah, just for the exact same reasons. He just feels like such a performer. You know, the lights are on him. Everybody looks to him when he's in the room. He seems to have one of those type of personalities. So, yeah, I did have him on my list. I hoped that I would get a chance to pick him. It felt to me like something we could get through a couple rounds and maybe I could sneak him in kind of the way TJ was thinking. But um, nothing, you know, I got to respect getting beat to the punch. Let's read our premiere and second episodes for each team on the board. Nicole kicks things off with Elizabeth Olsen, and then second episode hosted by Lil Nas X. Bill Kenny has Bob Odenkirk, followed by Renee Elise Goldsbury. Uh, Hallie has Nick Kroll, and then Stephen Colbert. Haynes has Gene Smart and Stephen Root coming in. Haskell has the pairing of Barack Obama and Carol Burnett. Sammy has Florence Pugh and Christian Bale. I have Tom Cruise and Julia Garner. And TJ has Meryl Streep and Leonardo DiCaprio coming in. Okay. Nicole, let's kick off the third round of our draft. Who are you going to start the third round with? Okay, so now we're at the point where I have, I have a lot of people that I, I'm just, I'm trying to be strategic here. I have, I'm, I'm very attached to quite a few people on this list. Um, whew, okay, this is someone who has risen recently. I would say, kind of the opposite of Lil Nas X in the way that she has, she came up really specifically through comedy, even more so than like comedy, like TV or movies or um, sketches, even like this person rose in a very modern way, a very like tech, you know, recent way. I'm not going to drop the name of the publication that she was part of and that made her famous and that gave her the opportunities to do what she's doing now. Uh, But (laughs) <laughs> yeah, TJ figured out who I'm talking about. Um, but she is just so funny and creative and has like everything from what I saw of her years ago when she was making a name for herself on the internet until now getting this opportunity, basically taking 
the Modern Family spot on ABC in the fall, which is like a huge deal for a TV show. This is a TV show she stars in and writes and stuff like every, all the stuff, you know, is, is her, she, it's her creation and it's an amazing show. It's like, it's just great. And, um, I would say that she's not always the, the punch of it. She really writes so many other characters around her to even be even more outrageously funny than she is. So maybe I'm giving some ideas for other, other picks, but, um, they're, there's such an amazing dynamic cast, but I really want her to, to host, um, because she, she brought all of these characters to life. Her character is more of like, kind of like the audience surrogate in a way. And I'm really now just talking about how much I love her show more than why I want her to host. But um, she is so funny. And I think she would bring a lot even to the writer's room and would just make, she, she'd she be the type of host that would make everybody around her funnier and quicker and sharper while also herself anchoring down like so well, like nobody else. And I just think it's time for her. And I am uh, this, I think this will happen. I know it will happen. Um, so I want Quinta Brunson to host my third episode. And Abbott Elementary is the show and BuzzFeed was the publication when I was being a little, little sneaky as I was describing. Yeah, that is a great pick. Uh, Quinta Brunson is somebody who is brought up a lot on the podcast as potential host to come into the show. So I think uh, that is a very fun pick. Uh, Haskell, did you have Quinta Brunson on your draft board? Yeah, she was probably going to be this round for me. I think uh, we kind of, in the last few years, had moved to a point where with a couple of the last generation of uh, network sitcoms ending, I think SNL was really the only network comedy that worked. Um, and Abbott elementary showed up this year and completely dismantled that notion. Like it is, it is caught on in a way that I didn't think network sitcoms ever would again. Um, and it's phenomenal and she's phenomenal in it. Um, again, we have to go back to that sort of, uh, you know, corporate thing between channels and hoping that, uh, we don't have to wait for Abbott elementary to be over for her to host, but, uh, you know, she does have sketch background and, uh, yeah, a phenomenal pick. Yeah, really, really great pick, Nicole. Okay, so Nicole, your team is Elizabeth Olsen, Lil Nas X, followed by Quinta Brunson. Bill Kenny, over to you, who kicked things off with Bob Odenkirk, followed by Renee Elise Goldsbury. And now, who is your third pick? I'm going to go with uh, one of the comedy giants of the last 40 years. Uh, should have hosted in the late 80s. Uh, couldn't host in the 90s and the early 2000s because of corporate synergy and his hatred for NBC. But now he can because he has his own Netflix show and he has a beard as long as a duck uh, brother. But uh, I'm going with David Letterman. That's oh, my this third is a, pick. Yeah, this is a phenomenal, a phenomenal pick, really. David Letterman, who has been portrayed by many people on the show, including Joe Piscopo, uh, Norm MacDonald, uh, Jason Sudeikis, Jeff Richards. Um, of course, uh, Norm's David Letterman impression is one that gets passed around a lot. But uh, this would be so much fun to have David Letterman coming in to host Saturday Night Live over here. Haynes, what do you think about the Letterman pick from Bill? This is a genius pick. I can't believe that he didn't even cross my mind. This completely just went over my head. I never even thought about David Letterman. And yeah, I mean, yeah, he is one of the biggest voices in comedy for the last 40 years. A lot of us, you know, grew up seeing him, you know, close to every day. And obviously he's got a lot going on right now. He's got the great, you know, Netflix show where he does the the one-on-one interviews and like Netflix is doing right now where they have uh, kind of bigger comedians do shows where they present like up and coming folks. He's got that new one with, that has some great uh, comedians on there and he does a little interview piece with them. So it's timely and classic at the same time. So great pick. Very, very fun pick. Okay, Hallie, over to you for your third pick. I'm going to I'm going to come in and bring in some girl power in this one. Um this is someone that I cannot believe the fact that she has not hosted. She is one of the most loved actresses right now. She can be funny, she can be dramatic. She's done so many huge things and I just cannot believe she has not yet hosted and I have to pick Zendaya for this one. Yeah, that is that is a great pick. That is somebody who I believe we kept saying all season 47, when is Zendaya going to host the show? And um, I, I knew that she had to go at some point in the draft. Um, TJ, how do you feel about Zendaya going here to Hallie for her third pick? I'm not as mostly distraught as some of the earlier picks, uh, but I that's that's a phenomenal. I think that's like one we probably a lot of us might have had on our list because 
she's incredible, phenomenal. Uh, so, I mean, great pick. For sure. Euphoria, Spider-Man just had an amazing, amazing year. So it uh, would be great if maybe her schedule opens up a little bit more for her to come in in season 48. That would be a lot of fun. Okay. Haynes used to kick things off with Gene Smart, then went to Steven Root. Where are you going to go for your third pick for the third episode of the season? I'm going huge for week three. Okay. People tune in because it's week one. You know, maybe I should have given them something more than Steven Root uh, for, 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 for week two, as far as, you know, the general populace, but they're coming back for week three. I guarantee that. All eyes are going to be on the Queen Bee when she hosts uh, Saturday Night Live. Beyonce. I mean, I know she's probably on everyone's list. That's why I feel like I just had to snag her now. Couldn't let it. Couldn't let it sit around. Obviously, just a stalwart in the entertainment industry for you know close to two decades. Probably it feels like, um, or roughly thereabout. So yeah, I don't feel like anyone could have a problem with this pick. She is as gold as it gets, I would imagine. For sure. I had Beyonce uh, on my list and I was going to take her in the third round if you did not, Haynes. So that is, uh, you definitely took my pick here. Obviously, Beyonce, who has been on the show a bunch of times. She's been the musical guest with Destiny's Child. Uh, there's been some Beyonce-themed sketches. I go back to that famous one with Justin Timberlake and Andy Samberg doing the single ladies dance, uh, Bobby Moynihan as well. Uh, so just uh, such a funny opportunity potentially to have her on the show, maybe some stuff with Jay-Z potentially as well, uh, Blue Ivy. So it would be a lot of fun to get some family stuff going on for Beyonce's appearance on the show. Uh, anybody else have Beyonce on their board? Yeah, Bill, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, we we uh, decided right before going live that we weren't going to do duo. So this is the second person I would have had host as a duo. Uh, Barack and Michelle would have been a duo for me, and Beyonce and Jay Z would have been a duo. So uh, even that taken away, I definitely would have had Beyonce uh, come in uh, shortly. So, if she hosts, pick. it's got to be by herself. I'm sorry, I reject that notion. Interesting. I think I think Michelle will make Barack better. I think Michelle could host by herself. If Barack hosts, I want it to be the duo, but Beyonce, it's she got to do it by herself. Well, they can all host by themselves, but yeah, I know what I mean. I think it takes, too. I'm joking. I'm, I'm doing this whole little thing about, you know, <laughs> women should, we don't should know need, that. need their husbands to, to, to no, I, I think it would take away if it's a duo thing. Oh, it's not about that. It's it's about the wattage. I mean, it, to, to have these two huge, yeah. people, I mean, that would, or if it's like Beyonce musical guest, a uh, host, Jay Z musical guest or something. I kind of like fair that enough. dynamic better. Yep. I just feel like she, it's like she's the, you know, I mean, they're both insanely big, but that's just my little piece. Yeah. I just feel like coming at it with that Barack logic, I can't follow that. I'm sorry. I'm I think he, he, I can think he could handle himself. it. I think he could handle it. I hear he I had some tough All jobs, four of them but. could host by themselves easily. I agree. I'm, I know, I know. But my point was like, she should, Beyonce should host by herself. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. Understood. All right. That is the first half of our third round of the draft. And uh, Haskell has been taking some big swings. We just brought up uh, Barack Obama. Well, Barack is hosting his premiere, Carol Burnett, who's coming in. Uh, that would be a huge episode for number two. Haskell, where are you going with episode number three? So last time when we were hosting, when we were drafting hosts that already host, I uh, I waited around, and I lost out on Steve Carell by one pick. And I didn't pick him because I was waiting because I wanted him to host my Christmas episode, okay? I'm not going to make the same mistake because uh, episode three, we're into October. I can start, you know, getting some Halloween-themed sketches in there. I think this guy is tailor-made for Halloween SNL. Uh, he is a one of the great comedic minds of the last 20 years, one of the great filmmakers of the last 20 years, and was this close to being an SNL cast member. I'm going to go with Jordan Peele. Ah, oh, such a good pick here. Obviously, we did have Keegan Michael Key host in season 46, and the calls for Peele to host have been very strong since then. TJ, was Peele on your list? He was. He was in my. He was in my my backup uh, tier. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know that I could really add any more. We, we know what he can do. Uh, he's his his sketch work with Keegan has become like one of the timeless sketch comedies 
and we know his strength of, you know as a creator i mean so this is just a phenomenal pick especially with uh, a movie coming out over i think next month he has a movie coming out with um a few people so like you know it'd be kind of prime around that time to promote sort of that maybe like a home release or something yeah would be really great another mad tv snl connection to talk about and uh, sketch comedy definitely in his blood so would be a lot of fun to have jordan peele host saturday Night live so uh, haskell's team is building right now barack obama Carol Burnett, and jordan peele hosting the first three episodes of the season sammy k do we have you with us you're all good Yes, I, I, I am back okay, <laughs> from technical back. difficulties, uh, and I'm ready to uh, present everybody with my next pick. Uh, okay. I had a lot Sammy, of time. Let me just remind the listeners who your team yes. is. So your team, yeah, yes. you have Florence Pugh, then Christian Bale, and where are you going to go with your third pick? Yeah, so, so far I have a lot of people um, who are, are really good actors, and I really, for this next pick, I want someone who you know is going to be hilarious, whether the writing's not entirely there or not. I want a straight comedian, not straight comedian, just a comedian uh, um, uh, for this uh, pick. Um, And I think this person is going to have a really big, uh, well, they're they're already big, but they have a movie coming out this fall that I am super excited about because we have not had a Judd Apatow produced big comedy in a long time. Uh, you know, his last movie went to Netflix. This is from the same team behind Forgetting Sarah Marshall. He's been in the NBC family for a, a while. Uh, was on Parks and Rec. And I think it's time for Billy Eichner to host SNL. Wow, the man on the street coming in to host Saturday Night Live for this third episode of the season. That is a very fun pick from Sammy K. Was Billy Eichner on anybody else's draft board? Yeah, he was on mine. Uh, he was also... Uh... He was one of my backups as well. I thought that was like a surefire when he's hilarious. Uh, his little stint as Craig on Parks and Rec is still some of the funniest stuff uh, in the later seasons of the show. Uh, Billy Eichner is hilarious. I mean, he's just great. Also, he was on Difficult People and he was really funny in that. So I, I think this is, he's he's so, he's, he's also just so, he's one of the best shouters in comedy. Like he's one of the best loud people. You think like him, Lewis Black, like great loud people in comedy. I think Billy Eichner. So turn your volume down for that episode a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I could just see him running from stage to stage being like, okay, now we're on to the next side. No, no, no. Yeah. But anyways, also, so, just, uh, also just the juke count. It's like, that's good. You know, we're a little low there. So I just, I like to see that. We're a little low, you guys. We got some, you know. I got, I got you. I got you with the Jews. Just one so good. far, but. Yeah, I've been, yeah. I've been lacking. I take that. I, that's on me, but good for you. Because you took the greatest black people is what, what happened. Uh, that's fine. I'm okay. <laughs> I did. So take some Jews, please. Yes, he got I, I you. Think I'll take black you, people is what I'll do. He got you. That's good. That's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, over to me for my third pick, and I'm still deciding between a few people. I mean, I saw some people on my board that I'm very excited potentially to host Saturday Night Live. So uh, this will be a lot of fun as we continue to get through this. But um, I think I have to go with somebody that I feel is probably in one of the biggest TV shows that's happening right now and growing into one of the biggest stars in the world. I recently just saw her on Jimmy Fallon and, you know, Tom Cruise, Julia Gardner. I feel like we could just continue this role. Uh, I'm going to go with Millie Bobby Brown to host the third episode of the season. I think, you know, bringing in somebody young, it's always fun to change things up and bringing in somebody who's really only 18, but becoming one of the biggest stars in the world is always very fun for SNL when we get to see this age discrepancy thing come in and see what she can do. So uh, I'm going to go with Millie Bobby Brown for my third pick in this draft. Did anybody have Millie Bobby Brown on their list? Okay. Uh, well, a lot of people. All right. So, uh, Sammy, I haven't heard uh, your comments on anybody else's picks for a while. Let me start with you on this one. Yeah, I mean, you know, Stranger Things is the the show of the summer. Um, and that is typically something that you'll find in those first couple runs of SNL when the season starts. You know, who was in the big summer movie? Who was in the big summer TV show? Uh, Millie Bobby Brown is a very interesting character when she's in interviews or on Hot Ones. So, and especially when you're really young hosting the show, that can always be like an interesting Uh, place in your career to come on the show and you know work with people who um, are seasoned comedy people so you know it it might not be the best episode of the season but it's definitely something I'd want to see happen okay uh yeah I'm looking forward to seeing what she could do on the show 
All right, TJ, let's wrap up our third round of the draft. I know you had a lot of picks stolen from you, but you must have some people up on your board that you are excited to take. It's fine. My people are used to having things stolen from them. Um, my pick is someone who... <laughs> yeah, I said it. Um, okay, my pick is uh, is someone who is a young queen, a, a new queen, a, a, a queen of the, the pandemic. Um, somebody that I think is rubbing a lot of elbows with SNL people right now. She's getting herself in that comedy kind of like uh, touching on social issues space a good bit. She's had a connection to Bo and Yang, a connection to Michael Che. Um, she herself is so bizarre, but like very much her own like identity. And I haven't seen someone like this. There might be someone like this who's existed, but like I haven't seen someone like her doing what she's doing on her show currently. And I think she's phenomenal. She's, I'm pretty sure she's in New York. Um, and uh, she was just on Michael Che's new show for a quick cameo. She's phenomenal. She's very funny. But this isn't a thing where like, oh, SNL needs her. She needs SNL. Like, I think she could grow from that boost. She's going to have her own star rise on her own. But I think this could be an elevation in kind of like what it did for Gerard Carmichael in a very similar vein, taking someone who's not as well known, but is still excellent in lifting them up. And my pick is going to be Z-Way. Okay, that is a very, very good pick. Obviously, Z-Way, one of the biggest up and coming comedians in the world. So that would be uh, very fun. Anyone have Z-Way on their board? Nicole, I knew let's it. go to you <laughs> Yeah, actually, not who who not who I thought you were going to say. I'm not going to say who I thought because that person's on my list. Um, you were, oh, were zigging and zagging. You'll find out later. Um, but no, Zwe was on my list, and I I think um, I, I think that the Gerard Carmichael comparison is good. Although I think she has more. She's grown a lot through social media on her show. I know, like her 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 TV show is like almost all of it is also posted and produced on like Instagram reels and TikToks. So I feel like she really uses social media to make a name for herself. Whereas Gerard, um, who actually went to his show last night and it was a no phone thing. So I won't say anything about how it was, but um, I think he doesn't use social media in a public facing posting about himself way. Um, so I think it, it is, it is a good comparison, but I feel like she um, she's, she's a lot more well-known than he was outside of, the c- comedy world, obviously, within it, both are very well known. Um, I'll tell you who I, I thought you were talking about when that <laughs> happens. Um, but no, great pick. I think that it would it would make a lot of sense, and she'd bring a lot of like wit and an interesting perspective. Her her brand is so unique, and I think it would it would it would kind of challenge the writers. It would you know like keep people on their feet the way she does in her interviews. You yeah. know, interviewing other people. I think that would be the same vibe, and it would make a very unique episode. I meant um, the drug comparison in the because you're right about the social aspect, but I meant it more from there. Both kind of these like awkward, nerdy, black but intelligent commenting on social issues through their shows and their media. Um, people who both would stand to do well from an elevation from SNL. So I meant like in that way, there's similarities. But the, you're right on the social aspect. That's definitely not the same. They're not in the same territory in terms of what they do for the craft, but sort of an archetype that they represent is what I was kind of thinking. Okay, uh, three rounds into the draft. I'll read out our teams. Nicole has Elizabeth Olsen, Lil Nas X, and Quinta Brunson. Bill has Bob Odenkirk, Lise Goldsberry, David Letterman. Allie has Nick Kroll, Stephen Colbert, and Zendaya. Haynes has Gene Smart, Stephen Root, and Beyonce. Haskell has Barack Obama, Carol Burnett, and Jordan Peele. Sammy has Florence Pugh, Christian Bale, and Billy Eichner. I have Tom Cruise, Julia Garner, and Millie Bobby Brown. And TJ has Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Ziwe. Okay, so for the fourth round, this will be what we assume will be the last of four in a row to kick off the season. This is usually our October run, so uh, keep in mind that who you're picking now will be the last for that, and then we'll have a little bit of break before the November shows. So, TJ, who is hosting your fourth episode of the season? This is somebody that we wanted to see host last year. Uh, For the young people... Uh, this person is uh, somebody who's been beloved for about the past decade. Um, they are very much in a similar vein to an Issa Rae and a Donald Glover, uh, even a little bit of a Quinta Brunson in the way that they came up. 
this person has such a very specific comedic voice, but they also use it to touch on things like mental health. Um, this person has used their voice from a perspective of silliness and immaturity, you know, very much as it should have been, you know, for someone in their early 20s to now using it as a way to kind of help elevate and like spotlight different things that maybe we should be paying a little bit more attention to. Uh, this person is hilarious. This person is tall. They're lanky. They're awkward. Uh, but they are also uh, an amazing musician. They are. They're just. They are fantastic in what they put their minds into. This person doesn't really do a ton on social media. They kind of do something and then they. Uh, they 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 kind of do something every couple of years and then they leave and then they come back and uh, they recently uh, won an Emmy and a Grammy for a production that they uh, recently did last year on Netflix. And my fourth person to host is going to be Bo Burnham. That is a great pick from TJ. Bo Burnham, who has been rumored to host uh, the Live from New York subreddit, is going nuts right now hearing that Bo Burnham is hosting TJ's fourth episode of the season. Haskell, as a moderator of the Reddit, what do you think about Bo Burnham hosting the show? Yeah, had him on my list. Uh, Great uh, you know, great stand up, but also just a great performer. One of those people that you could, if you think about them hosting, you start thinking about, you know, uh, a musical parody with, you know, Chris Red and Keenan or a pre tape with Please Don't Destroy, just something that feels like they could come in and mesh well with a ton of uh, different segments of the SNL cast. Uh, I would probably lean, probably be a strong pre tape episode. I, I know he's great, a live performer, uh, but that would be my only thing. That's probably why not they're not. He wasn't as high on my list, is because I think it'd be a, a pre-tape heavy episode. Interesting, uh, Nicole. I know you feel compelled to talk about this, so let me know what you think. I do, I do. Okay, so I can say this again. Last night was a no phones event, but since this happened once before, I gave my phone and after I uh, got it back. So I also, Bo Burnham was also there last night at the Drug Carmichael show. Um, and I can confirm he's very tall and he's sitting right behind me. Um, thankfully, it wasn't the other way around because if he, you know, him being tall in front, that would have been annoying. But uh, this is an amazing pick. Again, I'll tell you who I thought you were talking. TJ's been keeping me guessing because I had someone else in mind and I'll tell you who it was later if I pick this person. Uh, but an amazing pick and agree Reddit would crash i i think that it would crash and um it's a long time coming i feel like we almost got the bo burnham cameo for draws episode because they're such good friends um bo directed his most recent special but i i feel like bo probably wanted to give that i, I feel like that was probably presented as an option but bo probably wanted to give the spotlight to gerard and so didn't do the cameo but i feel like we very much almost got that and it would be uh especially like the please don't destroy stuff like you said I mean, I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm upset. The only bit of me that thinks is a little bit maybe unrealistic because I could see him being offered, but the way he's spoken about live performance and his own mental health. So I think maybe a cameo might be something he might be more comfortable with, but we would love to see him there. For sure. All right, let's keep things going in the fourth round of our draft. And when TJ started talking about somebody that we've been thinking about hosting SNL for a long time, I thought he was going to steal my pick because uh, this is somebody that people have been clamoring for. Um, so I, I'm, you know, I'm just stunned that he never was able to host. I think uh, looking over the list, I don't think there's been a lot of Brits that anybody has really chosen yet. So I'm going to go in that direction. And uh, you know, I kicked off October with a Tom. I'm going to go with a Tom for my fourth round. Uh, give me Tom Holland to host the fourth episode of the season to round up my October. Obviously, Zendaya has been picked from somebody else, but uh, Tom Holland will come in and Spider-Man will be there to host Saturday Night Live for my fourth pick. Hallie, what do you think of the Tom Holland pick? That is a very strong pick, and I can guarantee that viewership would be through the roof for that. Every teenage girl within the entire universe would lose their minds. There's no one teenage girls love more than Tom Holland. Um, and I think that he he's just proven that he's such a good actor and that he can take on things that surprise people. Um, so I think we'd get a really good variety out of him, and I think he'd mend really well with the cast. And I've been trying to manifest that for so long. So hopefully it'll actually happen Maybe we could get both Zendaya and Tom Holland, but that's a that's a very strong pick, and I'm surprised no it took that long. 
Yeah, for sure. I feel like uh, there was a lot of value getting Tom Holland here. So um, I will fight for that pick. Uh, Sammy, over to you, who went with Billy Eichner last round. Ooh, this is uh, this is tough because there's two different ways I can go here. And I think this is where I'm going to go. I told myself that if I got to the fourth round and one of these two people were still left, I would take them. Um, we've talked a lot about, especially last season, um, you know, cast members coming back to host. And with the Will Forte episode, that was kind of like for us in the community, like, oh, he's like the last one of that cast to come back and host the show. But, you know, also not on the pod, this group of people I know has talked a little bit about who do we consider in that era of the show of the Will Fortes and the Seth Meyers and Bill Hader and Kristen Wake. And there was a debate on this one person. And this is a person who I also regret not picking in my cast draft because he is one of my favorite cast members of all time. I am going with Bobby Moynihan to round out the first string of shows. Bob A coming in to host. Uh, that would be uh, so much fun. I know that we here at the network would be thrilled for Bobby Moynihan if he was able to host uh, the show this season. So uh, that would be amazing. Haskell, was Bobby Moynihan a consideration for you today? Yeah, I had two people uh, ready to go for that pick. I assumed Sammy would take the other person. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get selfish uh, and take somebody that I really want, and that would have been Bobby Moynihan, um, right up there with my favorite cast members of all time. Um, so I did not think he would go this early. I should have known, taking after Sammy, that he would be gone. But uh, a great pick and somebody that I really, really, I you know, it's, he probably doesn't have the vehicle yet to be somebody who would come back and host. But then again, I think there was years where maybe Forte didn't have that. Um, or even Sudeikis for a while. And then eventually they didn't. When they came back, it was great. So uh, rooting for Bobby Moynihan to come back and host. It would be amazing. So uh, we all really hope that that happens, whether it's 48 or another season. Uh, but for Sammy's team, he has Bobby Moynihan on his draft list. Okay. Haskell, over to you, who went with Jordan Peele last round. Yeah. So the reason I just said I had two people in mind for this pick is because I love, we all love when somebody comes back, right? And uh, I wanted to kind of get to that point in my draft. So, of course, I'm going with Shane Gill. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I Listen, this is a conversation we're going to have a ton over the summer and into the fall. When is it going to happen? It is going to happen. So, it, it, in my universe, it's happening for this fourth episode. It is the return of Kate McKinnon. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Kate McKinnon was on my board as well. I probably would have saved her for a Christmas episode. We just did a Kate McKinnon review podcast where we went over her entire career. And a lot of the listeners seem to feel that uh, Kate McKinnon obviously is going to return and host Saturday Night Live, but we definitely uh, would like a little bit of a break. But Haskell knows that he has to snag her before somebody else did. Uh, did was Kate McKinnon on anybody else's board as a potential pick today? Okay. Uh, Bill, what do you think? I had her later. Uh, I had her going, hopefully, for the Christmas show. I didn't think she'd last that long with this group. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, as I said on the retrospective of Kate, um, I would prefer that it be season 49 that she comes back. Um, but I'm not going to be mad if she comes back at Christmas or the finale. So, good pick. Yeah, I just, to me, it's too soon to bring back someone who was this much of a heavy hitter on the show for so, so long. Like, I feel like we need a chance to breathe for a second, build up the drama, let us get excited about her return. And honestly, like, you know, I guess we're on, this is the fourth episode, you know, just from her shooting her other shows, she's often missed more than four episodes of SNL in a row. So it's like, we we're tip, we typically go this long without seeing Kate. Um, I would hold off. Uh, I can't hate on the pick. I mean, Kate's going to be yeah. amazing when she's on, she's going to be amazing when she's on, but I feel like we need a little more time. It's the flaw of our draft. Cause I wanted to wait around to line up my Christmas episode last draft. So we're, uh, you know, we, we got a strike. Yeah. Yeah. If you want somebody to host, you got to pick them. So that's that's how it works over here. Uh, Haynes, over to you for your fourth pick. You went with the Queen B last time. Where are you going to go this time? Man, um, this this is tough, but I think I'm going to go with another 
this is to me i consider this kind of a splash pick but maybe only for a, a smaller set subset of people and honestly it's a good thing that i'm the one drafting uh this cast or, or these hosts because i i I don't know that we could convince Lauren to have this person on the show. I just think there's too much of a risk factor. I think this person is way too comfortable pushing the boundaries. And honestly, I might, if I was running the show and I put this person on, there's a chance that the fallout from the episode could be so severe. I might not work there anymore. I might lose my job running SNL if for the fourth episode, I have Eric Andre as the host. Ooh, that's a very fun pick. I like that. Eric Andre going to Haynes here as his fourth pick. Sammy, what do you think about that Eric Andre pick? Uh, I think that's a great pick. And he was uh, someone who, in my mind, when we were going through the rounds, I'm like, he, uh, yeah, I might pick him next. I might pick him next. So I, uh, I'm happy he was picked at all. I wish I um, could have been the one to snatch him up, but he is one of the most funny people on television right now. Um, the Eric Andre show is such a great thing that exists. And the fact that he continues to do more means, you know, there is a chance that he will come back and host Esther come and ho- host SNL. Um, and yeah, like you said, you know, it would be a risky episode and if they let him, you know, get the reins a little bit, it would be an incredibly memorable episode. So, uh, yeah, very jealous of you for this one. Yeah, it's a great one. And, uh, you know, he works very closely with Hannibal Burris, a former writer at Saturday Night Live. So there's definitely some connection to SNL there and would be fun also to get Sarah. Eric Sarah and him work together a lot. So it'd be a big week for her, I think. Yeah, that's a great call. That's a great yeah. call. So, Hallie, what are you, where are you going to go with your fourth pick? This is, I saved it for a little bit in, because I didn't think he would get taken. I felt pretty secure saving him towards like the middle or so. Um, But I've been talking about this for over a year now. Um, It's someone that I, one of my favorite people on earth, he just was in a very big TV show that did super well, had a lot of fans. And he has a big movie coming out this summer. Uh, He single-handedly saved Thor as a character for me. I have to go with Taika Waititi. For this. Okay. Great, great pick over there. Uh, Nicole, you seem very excited by this pick. What are your thoughts? An amazing pick, please. I mean, again, the internet, we the internet, I think, would react very similarly to like a Bo Burnham hosted episode. The I think the internet loves Taika Waititi more than like the average, you know, like film person or TV person or whatever. It's like he he's just really good at at like cultivating a community of some weirdos including myself online who can just like really appreciate what he brings to what to his work like he's he's a funny guy and it's the type of person who like is behind the scenes of a lot of funny stuff and then when you see him in action himself like on camera in interviews whatever you just look at him and you're like that's a funny guy so i mean perfect pick also he has uh his show What's Purdue show? What we do in the shadows is dropping a new season next month, so it'll probably end around the time that uh that like that episode would air. Also, phenomenal show and movie. That was a great, great pick from you, Hallie. Okay, Bill Kenny, you went with David Letterman last round. Where are you going to go this round? I'm going to go with one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Um, but there's kind of a synergy here of what SNL is like to have done the last few years where they bring in a controversial host that's going to get the clicks. And the only thing that this country loves more than a crash and burn is an apology tour. I'm going with Will Smith host my fourth episode. Yeah, this is a, a totally makes sense. I was wondering if Will Smith was going to be going in the draft at some point. I think that um, in a different way, uh, Will Smith was kind of like the Alec Baldwin of our last draft, where it was like, is anybody going to touch this grenade? But I would say that, or slap this grenade. Uh, but what I would say is that uh, Will Smith was by far the number one pick across the board for me when I had this idea in my head forever. And he completely slapped that away. So I would say that I am just very, very excited that he did get drafted because I think this would be, the ratings would be massive for this episode. Anyone else, you know, even consider drafting Will Smith today? 
TJ? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, was Haskell number th- TJ? Yeah, he was number three, and he was the problematic pick I was thinking of doing. And o- because of the slap is the only reason I didn't like – like, it, it brought him down in the rank. And I was like, this will get the ratings. People will watch. But, like, will, will I get the vote? I mean, imagine that monologue where Chris Rock comes out and gives him a big old hug. Like, that's – you know, and then slaps him, and then slaps. Like, him. <laughs> if, if 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 Will Smith's team, if PR team, is worth a penny, then they're saying let Chris Rock come out and pretend to slap Will Smith. Like that's the, the baseline of. Or it was a GI Jane joke. <laughs> I thought you meant have Will Smith slap Chris Rock again after like giving like Chris Rock a hug. Like I thought that's what you were saying, Haskell. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Uh, we we did get a chance to uh, talk to Chris Red recently on the podcast, and he did talk about his experience about how they ended up writing uh, that that Will Smith sketch this year and how they need to find a new angle on it. So it would be really interesting and a great challenge for SNL to find a way to get at uh, discussing the situation if Will Smith was to host Saturday Night Live. So, uh, chat, I'm sure right now you're having a lot of fun talking about this potential. Okay, I I, hey. I was gonna mention Will Smith honestly just as a joke. Uh, because I thought we would get some laughs and for the shock value. And I just love imagining like the really cringy idea of him doing double duty and like busting out, like welcome to Miami or something, you know, on the, on the music stage, uh, you know, 25 years later or something. Um, so to me, I, it's, it's a fun and hilarious pick. <laughs> I actually love that yeah. song. <laughs> My dad showed it to me. When I was like, <laughs> Oh gosh. Yeah. I mean, I uh, had the that- CD. I had the CD. It's a good CD. <laughs> I'm I'm more of a getting jiggy with it type of person. Same but, album. Yes, same also album. great. Yeah. Also mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's parents just, me. just don't understand. Nightmare on my street. Oh, uh, that's way back in the day. A lot of girls ain't nothing but trouble. Little Texas yeah. that one. A little, little, little outdated. Yeah. A lot of hits. No pun intended. Okay, Nicole. Let's head to you John! For, <laughs> for our last pick in the fourth round, and this will end off the October run for everybody on the draft. Yep. Okay. Oh, I have the most perfect. I I can't even. First of all, it's just hilarious to think that you had this draft idea in mind forever, knowing that Will Smith was like the person that you had in mind to do the draft. We just all have to laugh one more time at that. It's just literally, and I know this, I can confirm that like this, like Will Smith was like the reason John wanted to do this, essentially. So it's just very funny. Times ago. Now, you know, he didn't pick him, obviously. Um, But he was picked and we had a laugh about it. Okay, I have the most perfect pick for Halloween. This is someone who's also just a perfect pick to host SNL because of her history with the show or not with the show. You know, this is one of the many, I think, all the people we're talking about who auditioned and didn't get on the show. I think probably, like, we're all going to have somebody who did. Um, This is someone who has worked at NBC um, and is very famous for her um how she how she would give tours um and and lie on her tours when she was younger just to make people laugh and come up with random information about NBC and SNL and its history and all those things so it's it's someone who there is no more perfect pick for Halloween than this person I I really don't believe like she has a seat she's in season two of a new show coming out um and it was or the season one of the show was very well received I loved it season two is going to be a different concept or the same concept, different place. This is a perfect person to host. It's about time. Another person, a lot of us have been rallying for, for what, like 14 years in in a way at at this point. Um, So Aubrey Plaza hosting my Halloween episode of SNL. All right. Uh, Yeah. It seems like it's been something that should have happened a long time ago, but Aubrey Plaza coming in to host SNL right now and obviously just uh, known so well so many uh, comedic moments Sammy what do you think of Aubrey Plaza coming to host I mean you said it best like perfect Halloween host I I get uh, not that I think my pick for this isn't a great Halloween host as well because obviously Bobby Moynihan was in the David Best Pumpkin sketch but I mean Aubrey Plaza I mean that's that's uh, the cherry on top of, of the pick for this round um and yeah i mean she has such a history with mbc um i don't she's never made a cameo on the show has she um no. so yeah i think um someone who's in the orbit of uh the show and 30 rap in general who is super funny has a very distinct comedic tone that 
you know, there, I would love to see her work with Sarah Sherman. I know we talked about that with Eric Andre, but I mean, Sarah Sherman and, and Aubrey Plaza for a Halloween episode where they can kind of go balls to the wall. That's, that's pretty great. So I, I, I like this pick. Yeah, it's a great pick. And obviously former Parks and Rec uh, hosts and involved with the show in some way, obviously Amy Poehler, we've had Aziz host the show, uh, Chris Pratt to Rob Lowe. So, um, and uh, Billy Eichner is on somebody's list here. So uh, it would be, uh, it would be very fun to have Aubrey Plaza come in and host the show. Okay, let's read out the October list for everybody. And then we will jump to our November hosts. Nicole's team has Elizabeth Olsen, Lil Nas X, Quinta Brunson, and Aubrey Plaza. Bill went with Bob Odenkirk, Renee Elise Goldsberry, David Letterman, and then Will Smith. Hallie went with Nick Kroll, Stephen Colbert, Zendaya, and then Taika Waititi. Haynes went with Gene Smart, Stephen Root, Beyonce, and Eric Andre. Haskell went with Barack Obama, Carol Burnett, Jordan Peele, and Kate McKinnon. Sammy went with Florence Pugh, Christian Bale, Billy Eichner, and Bobby Moynihan. John went with Tom Cruise, Julia Garner, Millie Bobby Brown, and Tom Holland. And TJ went with Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio, Z-Way, and Bo Burnham. And that is our four October hosts. All right, let's kick off our November hosts with our fifth round of the draft. Nicole, who are you going to go with? So this is someone who I think is going to tap into both um, nostalgia now that we're in November, November, keyword, and also someone very future, someone who I think is the future in a lot of ways, is having a huge moment right now in pop culture and deserves every second of it. Is such a cool person and really great actress. And I just am looking forward to seeing more from her. I think that she's having her moment this summer. Um, there's a certain TV character whose, form, future, whose child self I really want her to play in Succession, season four. And I, I'm really hoping that that is going to happen. And it's Sadie Sink in November. As we know, she was in the Taylor Swift All Too Well 10 Minute video. She was there that night, November 13, when Taylor was musical guest and the, the video played, which kind of could count as a Sadie Sink uh, you know, cameo on the show. We could we could argue that one. Um, and then, of course, she needs to play Shiv Roy's younger self in season four of Succession. Yeah, that is a, a very fun pick. Obviously, like you said, had some connection to Saturday Night Live and would be great. I think Sadie Sink was also recently on Jimmy Fallon, so uh, would be great to see her there. Hallie, uh, what do you think of that pick, Sadie Sink going to Nicole? I had Sadie Sink very close on my list to this point. So I'm a little bit bummed, but I think that's one of the best picks that could have been picked. I think, one, I think that she has proven that she can give the performance of a lifetime. I won't say too much, but Stranger Things has been absolutely amazing. And I have rarely ever been this impressed with an actress. So I think that would be good. I always think it's good to bring someone young in. I think that's always super fun. Uh, to see that young talent shine through. So I think that was a very solid pick. Yeah, very, very good pick to kick off your November shows. Nicole, Bill, over to you for your first show in November. Well, I can't believe I got to the fifth episode and I haven't picked a cast alumni. Um, this is somebody who uh, is doing pretty well right now uh, with her show on Showtime, I believe. I love that for you. Um, as everyone knows, whoever listens to our super fan podcast, she is a fan favorite of ours. Uh, I'm looking for Vanessa Bear to host uh, my fifth episode. That is a very interesting pick because obviously uh, that is somebody who people have been clamoring for all year. And maybe somebody who, when she left the show, you wouldn't have necessarily thought would come back and host given the other choices that they've been made that have been made. But Vanessa quietly had an amazing SNL career and it would be excellent to get her back on the show, especially with the things she is doing right now. Haynes, what do you think about the Vanessa Bayer pick? Fantastic pick. Obviously, as you just said, you know, people have been, you know, wanting her to come back for quite a while. She's got, ton of stuff you know she's got some great things going on right now um so yeah fantastic pick for sure and uh definitely a lot less controversial than will smith coming to host the show <laughs> i think everybody would just be very very satisfied with vanessa bayer coming in to start so uh really fun start to the november shows from both nicole and bill hallie where are you going to go next with your fifth pick I very rarely think I, I have a hard time remembering that like musicians can host SNL too. I don't know why, but in my brain, I always forget about that. But this is someone I love her music. 
She is so popular right now. And through TikTok and everything else I've seen of her, she is so funny. She just has like this natural knack for comedy. And I feel like some people are not going to like this pick, but I have to go with Doja Cat. I think that is, yeah, that is a really fun pick. A lot of claps around the board. Uh, TJ, what do you think of this? I mean, Haley, like uh, Hallie na- nailed all of it. Doja Cat is hysterical. I have her Taco Bell rap that she did a TikTok of from a couple months ago still stuck in my head. It's a garbage beat. It's a garbage song, but she's like, her music is fantastic. She's hysterical. She'd have so much fun doing it. And I think she'd be really game. Like, I really think that could like bring her like an even better attention. Not that she like needs it because she's a star, but it's a f- fantastic pick. Really fantastic. Sammy, did you have Doja Cat anywhere on your board? Yeah. So when I was saying there's kind of two ways I was going to go in the last round, it was either go for a former cast member or go with Doja Cat. That was like the one other option because I think she's super funny. Um, She's someone who in the pandemic, at least for me, is, you know, when I really first became like super aware of her and uh, I enjoy her music. So whether, you know, she's doing double duty or not, she is just also very, very funny and very much herself and uh i think that is like the perfect kind of um you know host for snl to really show you know their brand of comedy even when they're not a comedian so um yeah very um jealous of your pick yeah i like the pick a lot and for those who know uh and know her i think this would be a really fun episode of the show all right haynes over to you who is your first pick for a host in november First pick in November will go to a someone that I think Star Wars fans have probably been looking to for quite a while. So we'll go ahead and welcome Ewan McGregor. Wow. Okay. I didn't actually think of this one. Obviously, uh, you know, very, you know, like star right now of a Star Wars show. So this is like totally makes sense. Did anybody else have Ewan McGregor on their list? So Bill, what'd you think of this? Fantastic pick. Uh, I love Star Wars as much as I love SNL. Uh, The end of Kenobi was this past week. So uh, uh, really hot pick. uh, And I think he would be fantastic on the show. Great, great pick. Amazing pick. And uh, Ewan McGregor has been impersonated on the show before by uh, both Jimmy Fallon and Seth Meyers. So I've uh, been around for a long time. And obviously, back in the days when Jimmy Fallon was a cast member on the show. So it uh, would be really great to finally get Ewan onto the show. I know the Star Wars fans would really enjoy that. Okay, Haskell, you made quite the splash in October. Where are you going to go with your first pick in November for the fifth round? I'm going to go with a guy that many Star Wars fans. Uh, have been wanting to join the franchise. It's a guy that I think um, could uh, be an SNL host on the same lines as an Adam Driver, a very great um, actor who could be really weird. He did a lot of he did some comedy at the beginning of his career, and then recently in a sequel. I'm going to go with Keanu Reeves. Okay, yeah, Keanu Reeves is a very interesting pick because Keanu has been one of those hosts, sort of like we talked about with the Tom Cruises and the Will Smiths of people who they said, how come he's never hosted SNL before? Obviously a very famous actor coming in. So I think the name recognition would be very strong for this one. But did anybody have Keanu Reeves on their board that they want to take for the draft? Interesting. So I think this is the first time the entire draft, Haskell, that nobody else was going to take Keanu Reeves. How do you feel about that? Still great value in my mind. Like, I think he's good, could be a great host, so no regrets there. Okay. All right, Sammy K, over to you. You went with your man, Bobby Moynihan, to end October. Who's starting things up in November for you? Yeah, so I'm just double checking really quickly, and I'm pretty sure this person is not hosted, so I've done my calculations. You know, you are um, this, uh, just eliminated from the draft completely if you draft. <laughs> yeah, I'm immediately booted. All my appearances on the SNL network are scrubbed from the internet. It's just, I understand the consequences here. But this is someone who we talk about, some people who have been picked in the draft so far, like Meryl, Leonardo DiCaprio. This is like a level of talent that's there who you go and you look back and you're like, I cannot believe this person has hosted SNL. That is what this whole draft is about. And this is someone who's been doing a lot of TV lately. It's been some some prestigious shows, um, but she has a, a, a rom-com coming out um, around the time of this November date. I think it comes out in October. Um, and she could be considered the queen of rom-coms, especially in the 90s. 
So I'm going to go with Julia Roberts. Wow, this is a, a very fun pick to put into the draft. Uh, yeah, Julia Roberts is somebody who I know that definitely during the 90s, people were clamoring for her in the 2000s for her to host SNL. And uh, I guess uh, for whatever reason, it never worked out. Uh, Bill, what do you think of the Julia Roberts pick? Definitely had her on my list as well. Uh, it's I think it's one of those things where she hasn't wanted to do it, uh, if I've read that correctly, where uh, she was kind of intimidated by the live aspect of the show, which is probably, to be honest, a lot of these uh, superstars. Uh, they definitely don't want to embarrass themselves if they're this huge movie star. But I think she'd do fantastic, and the cast would carry her if uh, she she had some problems. So great pick. Definitely a really great pick. Uh, Julia Roberts has been impersonated on the show a couple times. Uh, Neve Campbell has impersonated Julia Roberts, Amy Poehler, and Ashton Kutcher has actually done a Julia Roberts before in an Oprah sketch back in the day. So uh, if you ever want to go check out some Julia Roberts impressions from that time at Saturday Night Live. So Sammy goes with Julia Roberts to kick off his November shows. And then it is over to me for the start of my November shows. And I know that, uh, you know, when people start thinking about November hosts, I mean, there's a lot lot of big names that come out in October, but it's November sweeps. So, you know, people are watching, the advertisers are watching what's happening with Saturday Night Live. And I want to bring in a big name that's going to bring in huge ratings for this particular show. And, you know, I know there was, you know, not everybody was thrilled with Kim Kardashian hosting in season 47, but I'm going to go dip my toe back into the family a little bit. I'm going to pick Kylie Jenner to host Saturday Night Live at the beginning of November. I think that she will come in. And I think that they're going to end up, if they had to pick somebody else from that family, despite the reservations, I think that a lot of people, w I, I think that that is the path that Saturday Night Live would go with that. Was there any other Kardashian connection somewhere on the board here? I, I, I thought about this family because I think there are, you know, plenty of characters there. I considered Kris Jenner. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, I didn't settle on her, so I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't have any Kardashians on my final board. Um, but I understand the pick for sure. Yeah, for sure. It's not something that I would say like I'm necessarily clamoring for, but I think it's the path that SNL may be considering down the road. So I think that Kylie Jenner um, would, would have done that. And uh, Bill with a great comment in our private chat about, <laughs> about, about having a <laughs> in hologram. I yeah. second that strongly with Kanye West, musical guest, obviously, on that Wait, hologram that he gifted her. Isn't yeah. Kylie the one who did the Pepsi commercial thing? Kendall. Kendall did that. Yeah. What's the difference? Sisters. <laughs> this two? Oh. Yes, yes. Wait, which one did you take? I took Kylie. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Kendall is still available to be picked. Um, and so is Chris. So is all the other Kardashians. Okay. All right. This seems like the um, one of the most unpopular picks after Keanu Reeves. Um, so, uh, TJ, over to you for your fifth pick to start the November shows. Okay. So this person, I'm very glad that I got a chance for this person to go under the radar. Um, I'm break out. I'm going to get to sweep them up. This person isn't what we would call a movie star. This person, I believe, is what we call a television star. They are currently one of, I believe, the hardest working women in comedy at the moment. And I don't mean like, oh, their output is like always at the top. I mean, this woman does not stop working. Television shows, podcasts, she keeps the appearances, interviews. She says yes all the time. She's hysterical. Stand-up specials, hosting uh, reality shows, um, talking about things like 90 Day Fiance, being single, a, a, a smorgasbord of things. If you go to this person, there's something she's done or has touched on that you might be able to find her take on hilarious, whether it's reality TV, uh, whether it's a date. Like, there's just so much that she's done. She currently has a show on NBC right now that's, the show is eh. But she's amazing in it. Anything she's in, she elevates and does better in. She's one of those people. Matter of fact, The Lonely Island saw something in her and gave her and a couple of other young uh, uh, comedians a show on the Fox network that nobody watched uh, uh, late at night um, called Party Over Here, I think it was. But she is a star and she's hysterical. And she's not on the rise. She's just great. But she needs, she, she could use that SNL bump. I'm picking Nicole Byer. 
Yeah, that is a wonderful pick. That is somebody that I, I think if that was stolen from you, TJ, you would have been upset like some of the other picks and uh, <laughs> definitely was on my board as well. Was really a buyer on any, as any, anybody else's board? Okay. All right. Well, yeah, somebody I was considering, I obviously went with Kylie Jenner <laughs> instead. But, wow, but the, the two, comparing the comedic <laughs> talents of those two, it's just, it's hard. They're both have so much comedic uh, experience. You know, they both work really hard in comedy, like TJ said. They apply I never would have said to this. I never would have said to Nicole to have something against one of the Kardashian people. That is, that's what's surprising to me. I don't have anything against them. I really, I like the Kardashians. I just, I would not choose Kylie to host of any of them. I, uh, but, I just think it's the most realistic hosting choice. But uh, I, I believe Nicole. I believe Nicole Byer. I don't. I may got this wrong. I believe Nicole Byer is roommates with John Milheiser. She Dad, is right? she, another S. No, she has so many connections to comedy people. Um, I, I don't know if she's still living with it, but I know like as recent as her podcast from a few months ago, she was living with John Milheiser. So yeah. definitely so connections to SNL fun. people. That's a fun connection. All right. So uh, to kick off everybody's November shows, uh, Nicole went with Sadie Sink. Bill went with Vanessa Bayer. Hallie went with Doja Cat. Ains went with Ewan McGregor. Haskell went with Keanu Reeves. Sammy went with Julia Roberts. I went with Kylie Jenner. And TJ went with Nicole Bayer. Okay, TJ, sixth round of the draft. Where are you going to go? Okay, now now this one this one is, is a pick for me. This is not a pick for SNL. This is, I am Black Lorne, and I want to pick somebody just because I want to do it. This is, this is somebody, like, I think they're fantastic. They don't really need this. This person is kind of perfection in their little niche, uh, little niche corner that they have picked um, when it comes to uh, television and musicals. But if you, if you ask any person who's got a chance to see some of her work, she's hysterical. Uh, she is, she, she's, she's an incredible singer. Uh, as a writer, she's fantastic. And she helmed the only decent show the CW has had over the past 10 years. This person is not somebody I'm expecting a lot of people to know, but this is somebody I love because I love her show, uh, her show Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I'm going to pick Rachel Bloom as uh, a pick another just an incredibly funny inclusive wonderful person who's hysterical that would absolutely crush it some of y'all might not like it because it would be kind of a sing-songy episode but like people with the kardashian episode i could give a flying potato uh rachel bloom is my pick okay nicole what do you think about the rachel bloom pick here i love her um tj keeping his promise to me to to get those jews on his roster so i love that oh i love God. her show <laughs> Crazy Ex-Girlfriend was such a revelation, like really nothing like it. And I feel like yeah. such a gift and just such a one of a kind show. And she, I mean, she's been rumored to be, people are, are wanting her to, now that Beanie Feldstein is leaving Funny Girl in a few months, people have been saying, you know, putting Rachel Bloom's name out there, which I think could be really interesting. Um, so yeah, I, I love this choice. Uh, she wasn't on my list, but again, now that you bring it up, I, I would love to see her there. And I think she would love to be there too. Okay. All right. Uh, it is over to me for my next pick in the draft. And I'm going to take somebody who I think has a very realistic shot of hosting SNL next season. Uh, this is someone who, again, is another up and coming star and recently played Elvis in one of the biggest movies coming out right now. I'm going to go with Austin Butler to host SNL in November for that pick. Uh, I think that that is somebody who I could really, really see uh, having a lot of fun. I think people will really like him uh, hosting SNL. Hallie, what do you think of that pick? I literally, before I came to record this podcast, I spent two hours with my friends watching clips of Austin Butler <laughs> prepping for the Elvis movie. It is such a phenomenal movie. I think he's going to be, like, if you haven't seen it, his performance is, I was hesitant going into it, absolutely amazing. Like, I could not have predicted that that performance could come from him. So I think um, that is a very solid pick. I think he's definitely going to be up for a bunch of awards, which is always a good, you know, let's get the awareness. Let's keep it going, get the hype up. Um, but I think that is a very solid pick and I can't recommend the movie enough. So. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I mean, I would have drafted Elvis if he was still around, obviously with us, but Austin Butler will do. Uh, Sammy, over to you. Yeah, for this one, I wanted to go a little out of the box. Um, I mean, I guess you guys will be the judge if this is an out of the box pick. Um, but this is someone who I think maybe isn't necessarily known for their comedy or their comedic talent, but they are a comedic talent and have been given the opportunity in various avenues to do so. 
Um, he's one of my favorite um, current music artists. And even though I don't think they necessarily have a project coming out this year, you know, you know, Chance the Rapper hosted when, you know, he wasn't promoting any music or anything like that. So, you know, don't need this to be a double duty situation or anything like that. I just think this person is funny. Um, they, you know, last year had one of my favorite albums of the year. Um, and I think it would be fun to see them play in the SNL sandbox with PDD, maybe with some pre-tapes. Um, I'm going with Tyler, the creator for this pick. Oh, wow. That is a really, really fun outside the box pick. I love that pick coming from you, Sammy. TJ, what do you think of it? I, 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 I'm, well, I'm not, I'm not upset about it, but like, I had like a little list of like maybes that I was, that was literally like people that no one would ever go for. That like even I know like would Tyler even be well Tyler from 2011 probably wouldn't be as professional but like I thought no I shouldn't pick Tyler because I don't know if he would actually respect doing it but he would be fantastic to see do it um, great pick I love his music uh, Sammy top notch pick yeah very very solid Haskell over to you for your sixth pick. Yeah, I'm not going to go outside the box with this one. I'm pretty in the box. So much in the box. I had to double check six, seven, eight times because I, I was like, this person had to have hosted at some point, and it just, I just forgot. But I'm going to go with Mindy Kaling. Oh, all right. Mindy Kaling here. Did anybody have Mindy Kaling on their board? Bill, what do you think of this? Great, great pick. Uh, I love the office connection. I love the chance of cameos with that. She is one of the funniest women on the planet. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, I had to check that as well. I was like, there's no way she hasn't hosted at some point, but she hasn't. So that's that's a great tr- chance to get her in. Ains, did Haskell steal a pick from you? He did not steal a pick, but I, I mean, I have her at the top of my list just, and I'm churning the list constantly, but she's always been at the top. Um, is She's obviously a fantastic performer. She's a hilarious performer. She's a great writer and creator. Uh, just a really smart, you know, wonderful choice. I would love to see her host. Mindy, the creator. Okay. <laughs> hey, I was about to over- say that. Yeah. We're, we're more thing over here. Same. It was yeah. literally. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the inception. Uh, Haynes, over to you for your sixth pick, your second host in November. Yeah. So it's still so many choices on the board. I'm going to go ahead and yank someone that I feel like you know, is a pretty heavy hitter right now, uh, considering the content that they're involved in. This person is a masterful actor, whether it's going back to Uncle Argyle in Braveheart or the police chief and super troopers, Brian Cox um, has been amazing on Secession, and I think he would be just unbelievable on the show. Wow. Okay. That is a very interesting pick. I know, Nicole, you are a our succession yeah. uh, person on the panel tonight. So what do you think? Yeah. That? Not who I would have chosen from the cast, um, but I think that he would Sarah have fun Snook? with it. Why would I tell you? I'm, we I'm we tell know you. who Nicole would pick. Yeah, we, we do. It's you so don't. obvious. It's you so don't. obvious. You don't know. You don't know. Yep. Okay. We're literally the same person. All right, all right. Um, I, I think he would have fun with it. I think he, I mean, he's such a, a man of the, the stage and the, the theater. So I think he would rise to the, a, a cushion, you know? Yes, yes. That's exactly that's what I would have said. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Hallie, uh, you went with Doja Cat last time. That seemed to be a very celebrated pick across the board. Will you do it again for your sixth round? I okay this person I just moved up like three spots just because I felt like it um but I'm going with someone who has history with SNL maybe was not nearly as appreciated as he should have been and is now kind of proving that through his own sketch comedy show um recently renewed for a season three not like recently recently but there will be a season three um I have to go with Tim Robinson Okay, so this is very fun. A former alumni of the show, a cast member who would, you know did not get their due on the show, and obviously I think You Should Leave has been widely celebrated among the sketch comedy fan community. So this would be a great thing to have Tim Robinson come back and celebrate him on the show. Sammy, what do you think of the Tim Robinson pick here? I love Tim Robinson. I love I Think You Should Leave. He is someone who is definitely on my long list. Um, I do think 
I think you should leave is very big on the internet. And I'm, you know, trying to think, is it at the point um, where, you know, it's big enough to where Lauren would invite him back. That's my, that was the only thing in my own justification when I was looking at it, but just like on paper as someone who I want to see host the show and be able to have control, um, you know, at, when I go back and watch the season he was in and I, you know, see random sketches, he pops up and he, from, from that moment, he had his voice. So to be able to see it kind of elevated to a point of being the host of an episode to see what they would be able to let him cook with on the show. You know, it, it could be a watered down version of I, I think you should leave in some regards, but I do think um, it would make for a memorable episode and something I would love to see happen. All right. Hallie says to Tim Robinson, I think you should host and he is on her team. Bill, last time you went with the great Vanessa Bayer. Where are you going to go with your next pick in the sixth round? I'm going to go with another redhead. Um, I'm going completely out of the box. Uh, this is something SNL has not done since 1976. Um, I'm going with the presidential press secretary, Jen Psaki. Uh, right around election time, uh, she is such a, a personable person. She, you know, you watch her press conferences after four years of a hellscape with their press secretaries. Um, she is such a breath of fresh air, and I would love to see what she could bring to the show. Uh, so she'd be the first since Ron Nesson in 1976. So Jen Saki. Bill with the Saki bomb on the podcast today. Uh, he comes in with that out of nowhere pick. But I actually, I don't think Jen Saki is the uh, press secretary anymore. I think I believe she's a former she's press secretary. She's but former. still ca- still counts as a uh, as a pick and I think that would be really really uh, fun to have her on the show I know I think she was also recently on the show she was show on as well Alan. and she was like geeking out over it which kind of implies that she would geek out over SNL in a similar fashion so that's a good pick yeah and now she, she has more time on her hands um, she's yeah, going, she's, actually, former. she's going to um, NBC News I think now so I mean even all the more reason that would make sense yeah I think for she's sure. gonna be we on had, NBC yeah. News let me ch- I'll check that yeah, we had Brian Williams host the show once upon a time, so uh, it's not impossible. Um, Edwin Newman as well. So, um, Brian, Brian Williams told me he was a cast member. Is that true? <laughs> I he think would never so. lie. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay that was great um okay nicole uh over to you for your sixth pick in the draft last time you went with sadie sink yes okay and confirming so jen saki is joining msnbc in the fall so i think actually one of the definitely top half of most realistic picks here more realistic than we thought so um i like that okay this person is realistic in the way another person we all I think have, we've like, oh, this person could host, but it's another one of like, I think if they were to host, it would be in character and that would be really fun and interesting. Uh, I think we need that type of levity and and it's like, it's someone who would host in probably a politically charged uh, character, but bring some levity around it. Um, And I think I would rather talk about politics through this ridiculous character that this actor is very known for rather than like, you know, these really hefty cold opens. Um, I think it would be a a breath of fresh air while also covering politics and and talking about the state of the world. Um, And November is a month to do that. You know, it's voting month, even if it's not a presidential election year, but it's, there's a lot at stake. And so I feel like this person is a great November host. And that is Sasha Baron Cohen and probably as Borat, but also it could be as himself too, or as really any of his people. I think he'd rather host as like four or five different characters he has than as himself. And I'd be okay with either, either or any of those. Yeah. And Sasha Baron Cohen uh, has appeared on Saturday Night Live before Uh, he was in a cold open as Borat once upon a time. Um, I believe that was in about 2005 ish. Uh, And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously would be super memorable to have uh sasha baron cohen on the show i uh, would be interesting to see like how deep into character it would be would it be as borat would it be as uh, as someone else but uh just really amazing pick and obviously uh like a really good person as well um anybody else have sasha baron cohen on their board yeah i mean first of all like you said nicole to see him host as borat would be amazing but i also it would be great if he just came out and did the monologue as borat and then the very first sketch we got a bruno and then an ali g yeah. like i could do all of his characters uh he's amazing um it would be 
yeah, it, it would just, I think, I mean, he, he was right near the top of my list. I think he would be fantastic if we could ever get him on. And I think we will sooner or later, um, maybe later, maybe not sooner, but I think eventually we'll have to have him on. He's just had such um, an impact and so many people love him. Uh, you know, the Borat movies are so particularly huge, uh, fantastic pick. I can't wait in this vision. <laughs> Love it. Um, and and you might get a cameo from Rudy Giuliani. So, I mean, it's a win-win. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. That's, that seems great. Um, okay, let's uh, let's um, keep going. Nicole, uh, let's wrap up November with the beginning of the seventh round of the draft. Okay, lucky number seven. So, here we go. Okay, this one you're talking about who, I, who everybody thinks that I would pick for succession. This is a thing where... I, there's someone who I want the most and who I think would make more sense and who has demonstrated interest. Um, this would be a duo. If I could do duos, I would choose these two. Um, I'm not choosing the one who I love more. I'm choosing the one who is known more publicly, who is a meme of himself, who has appeared on the show, did a good job. Um, someone he appeared alongside, later hosted the show just a few months after they appeared together. So we know that one of them, you know, impressed enough. And I think that he impressed enough too in his, in his um, quick, 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 his quick moment. Um, and so I think that Nicholas Braun is, it's his time to host. Of course, Matthew McFadden is who I really want to host, the Tom to Nick's Greg. But I think that Nick wants to host more. I don't think Matthew would want to host as much. Um, Nick makes more sense. They're going to be filming Succession in the fall. They, they actually already started. Um so it makes sense. And of course, I'm acting like I'm disappointed because I'm not choosing the one who really has my heart. But I, I love Nicholas Braun. I love Cousin Greg. I think that it's like it, there's there's a lot there that, that SNL can mine. Um, and he's funny and he likes the stuff he's like nerdy about, you know, comedy and, and being memeing himself. And I just think he would do a good job. And there's so much to, to mine. So, so there's my my tall giant since I did not get Bo Burnham. I will take six, seven Nicholas Braun. Yeah, that seems like a good one. And Nicholas Braun actually appeared on Saturday Night Live uh, last year during the What Up With That sketch. TJ, uh, would, did you, would you have taken Nicholas Braun at any point? I, 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 no, I don't think I would have. I think he's a phenomenal pick, and I appreciate him because I was a fan of his like early work as like a minor Disney actor in like, like really like Disney Channel B movies. And because of uh, Nicole and a little bit of like some other like, succession influencers, I decided to check out the show and <laughs> decided to check out the show. And he is fantastic. I, I mean, I, I, I really like this actor. He's, this is, it's great. That, didn't he just get like an Emmy nom? I think. For the he role? has before and he likely will again. The the best supporting actor in a drama Emmy is predicted to have literally four out of six succession actors, which yeah. is such a such a serve. And I like that. He's very funny. He's a very great actor. He's a very good actor. So I think it'd be honestly, I think the SNL cast would really enjoy him because he's just a really lovable guy. And I was okay. referring to Oscar Isaac when I was saying that he so Oscar, Emily Radikowski, and Nicholas Braun were the three um what up with that characters. And 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 Nick had a huge thing on his shoulders. He played, you know. He was he was the the Bill Hader Lindsay Buckingham stand in so he did a good job with that making the most of it. Apparently, Lindsay couldn't right. be here for tonight's show too, uh, right, John? Like uh, we unfortunately yes. like we won't be able to get to him. We'll we'll have to get him on next time. Uh, okay, Bill. Uh, like I said, you went a little bit outside the box for Jan Saki last time. How are you going to finish off your November? I'm going to continue the woman power in November. Uh, I'm going with somebody who almost was a part of the cast way, way back. Um, she is a fantastic actress, uh, has recently appeared on The Mandalorian, BoJack Horseman. Uh, she had her own show on Comedy Central, Strangers with Candy. Uh, I'm going with Amy Sedaris. All right. Amy Sedaris. Is Amy Sedaris a thought for anybody else across the board? Okay. No, but I love her as Princess Carolyn. On Bojack Horseman, yeah. she's she's fantastic. She's hilarious. Pascal, were you thinking of Amy Sedaris at all? Yeah, she she was on kind of my uh, my backup list. Definitely com entirely underappreciated, maybe by two different generations now, and maybe doing something like The Mandalorian kind of ups that a little bit, and people appreciate what she is for a comedic mind. Yeah, agree. Okay. Hallie, uh, you went with former cast member Tim Robinson last round. Where are you going to go this round? I am going to go for one of my favorite actresses. She is in some of my favorite films ever. She always cracks me up. And she's going to this fall be wrapping up a run on Broadway. 
So her schedule will free up. Um, I'm going to go with Beanie Feldstein for this one. This is a very fun pick from Hallie. Beanie Feldstein going to Hallie here in the seventh round. Haynes, what do you think of this pick? Great pick. I know that um, she is someone that I think kind of the online community has been clamoring for for a little while. I see her name pop up um, when people talk about folks that they wish would host, and I think she would do a fantastic job. Yeah, most recently played Monica Lewinsky in the American Crime Story impeachment show. And uh, yeah, obviously a lot of Monica Lewinsky content in the history of SNL. So (laughs) that could be a fun little connection there if they would ever go back to something like that. All right, Haynes, always love to see what you will come up with. So who will host your last show in November? Well, I, you know, like as much as anyone else, I think that uh, stand up, Comics do a really great job, obviously, you know, with the monologue is essentially, a, you know, gives gives the opportunity for a stand up bit. Um, this person, though, I think could be a pretty good character actor. I've seen him do, you know, some acting in some of his other shows. Um, you might call him a bit of a cheeky bastard. Uh, Ricky Gervais. Oh, okay. All right. So we had an office connection before, but we're going to head over mm-hmm. to the British office for this next one. Ricky Gervais, obviously somebody who would be a great fit on the show. And you have to wonder why Ricky Gervais has never hosted SNL before. Sammy, what do you think of the Ricky Gervais pick? Yeah, I mean, something that, you know, Ricky Gervais, ah, that is interesting for sure. I mean, you know, he obviously has the history with NBC, you know, hosting the Golden Globes for, you know, so many years there, you know, I do wonder if, like, is this the time, like, is 2022 the time for Ricky Gervais to host? What would that show look like in 2022? It, it, it's an interesting thing to ponder, but I mean, I always enjoy his monologues at the Golden Globes, and I always, and, you know, as someone who loves when stand-ups come to do the monologue or, you know, write their own jokes for the monologue, doing a stand-up set for SNL. I and mean, that would be the reason to tune in. And, you know, will he take a Golden Globe style approach and, you know, right before he's about to be in a bunch of sketches, just like roast the entire cast and Lauren and the writers and everything like that. Like, you know, I would be very interested to see how that all goes down. So, you know, interesting uh, pick there, hand. Yeah. Very fun pick. Okay, Haskell, over to you for your final pick in November in the seventh round. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I'm going to close out the Chris circle of the Hollywood Chris's. I'm going to go with Chris Evans. Yeah, that's somebody who I definitely had on my list as well. Captain America potentially coming in or former Captain America coming in to host Saturday Night Live. I know he's getting into a lot of different projects right now. Um, so it would be fun. Uh, Kalina, if you're watching, you know, keep it together. Uh, Chris Evans potentially hosting SNL one day, I think would be very, very fun. Was Chris Evans on anybody else's board? Okay. TJ, would you have taken him soon? Uh, he was up there. Like it, it's, it, he was definitely close. Like it, it's, I'd say he was maybe like very close to being maybe like my fourth pick. If we only have like three picks left, um, very up there. I mean, he's okay. Buzz Lightyear. Like, what else has he done? I mean, he's he's Buzz Lightyear. You guys, it's his biggest That's role. Very true. Yeah. All right, Sammy K. Over to you. You went with uh, Tyler the Creator last time. Where are you going to go this time to finish off your November shows? This one is a bit of a sentimental pick for me because, you know, this is the, you know, theoretically the Thanksgiving episode here. So, you know, I always like to see, you know, either a friend of the show, but obviously, you know, if they're a friend of the show, they've most likely hosted before. Um, So, you know, that is something I can't do for the purposes of this draft. But something for me that is, as an SNL fan, a, a holy grail, if you will, of something that I you know, is out there that has happened that I would, I've always wanted to see, but have not been able to find online or anything like that. Um, And, you know, guys, let me know if this doesn't count, but I think it should because it was not broadcasted or anything like that. But, you know, if you guys were around for the writer's strike or familiar, you know, there's a certain someone who hosted an episode of SNL um, because they weren't able to, perform an actual show, um, you know, because, you know, the writers are on strike and he is in my favorite movie of all time. I have a poster of it that I'm looking at right now. I have a Funko pop, but this is the other character. I don't have his character. Michael Sarah is my pick 
for um, this Thanksgiving episode. Yeah, that is a great pick, Sammy. I really love that thought process of that. And of course, uh, Taron Killam doing the great Michael Sarah impression when he was on the cast as well. Uh, it's me, it's me. Um, but I would love to see Michael Sarah hosting SNL one day. I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, did anybody else think of Michael Sarah? Okay. Well, Sammy, I think uh, but most people seem to not have thought of him, but agree that that was a very good pick for your cast. So uh, your November shows wrapping up with Michael Sarah. All right, over to me. Uh, so for my final show in November, and you know, obviously I had a little bit of controversial controversy, but I, it was fun for me. It was November with Kylie Jenner and Austin Butler coming in, and uh, I'm going to wrap things up in my November shows. Um, you know, I've been thinking about this person. You know, following in the footsteps of some other famous athletes who have hosted the show. We actually haven't had like a great athlete hosted episode, I think, in a while. And I'm going to make a splash this time by picking uh, the world champion for the fourth time uh give me steph curry coming in to host saturday night live for this time uh just one of the biggest names in the world a huge star he's also a television producer and uh, i think that this would be a very fun show despite haskell's face so um <laughs> i'm gonna go with steph curry for this one haskell are you gonna kill me <laughs> has that dude ever said anything interesting um <laughs> okay well i think he has i think he, he has, has a show on hbo max i mean not that that matters yeah, I, I think it's good it following it, the post. Just make sure I mean, the episode I, isn't as crappy as his Splash Bros uh, uh, Space Jam movie. I mean, let's be real. Bill Russell hosted Saturday Night Live. Has Bill Russell said that many interesting things? I mean, Bill Russell hosted. Who is, uh, who is Bill yeah. Russell? Whoa, whoa. What? 11, 11 time NBA well, champion. Whoa, whoa, you can whoa all you want to. We can start a wave. I have no idea who that is. I don't do sports. Me and sports ain't friends. Yeah, uh, Bill Russell hosted Saturday Live. Obviously, Michael Jordan did it. Uh, Charles Barkley, LeBron James. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing Steph Curry come in to wrap up my November shows. I think this would be a fun pick. When, when you said make a splash, I immediately knew who it was going to be. Uh, I had Steph as my. There's only two athletes that I considered. Um, one, and and you know, I don't know how charismatic Steph would be in sketches i don't know the other person i think would be very charismatic but might have a hard time reading the cue cards that was rob gronkowski and so these are the only these are the only two people that i was thinking about but i i i think steph's a great pick yeah for sure and i know gronk could have been on haskell's board for sure because of course boston connection so we'll see if that does come up eventually all right tj let's wrap up november with your final show all right this is i've been i've been struggling a little bit because a lot of fantastic people have been knocked out you guys have been making some mostly great picks um i'm gonna pick so i'm I'm still gonna get a little personal with the, these last picks all right these aren't gonna be as big names this is more like black lauren is feeling himself he had a big opening but he wants to make the show his own so i'm gonna pick somebody who is not yet hosted from my favorite tv show of all time this actress is able to bring like dramatic gravity as well as like comedic heightening to anything she does she's fantastic at supporting she's incredible at leading she is honestly oof one of my first tv crushes she is incredible uh she's uh you know on a little lesser known nbc comedy named called community i'm going to be picking uh allison brie to come in and host saturday night live yeah, this is a very fun pick, Allison Brie. Obviously, a lot of NBC connections, and uh, just seems like just, it would be a really fun show to have Allison Brie host SNL. Bill, what do you think of the Allison Brie pick? Love it. Uh, TJ and I are, are succinct with our community love. Uh, I love Allison Brie. Uh, I am still devastated that she didn't get another season of Glow because of the pandemic. Right. Um, so yeah, that that would have that would be a great great show to watch. I mean, I, I want to get every cast member of Community to host SNL. Like, that's that's what Absolutely. I would love to see. Yeah, yeah bring Chevy back. <laughs> 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 oh, that that's great. Okay, um, let's read out uh, the November lineups for all of our teams. Nicole went with Sadie Sink, Sasha Baron Cohen, and Nicholas Braun. Bill went with Vanessa Bayer, Jen Psaki, and Amy Sedaris. Hallie went with Doja Cat, Tim Robinson, and Beanie Feldstein. Haynes went with Ewan McGregor, Brian Cox, and Ricky Gervais. Haskell went with Keanu Reeves, Mindy Kaling, and Chris Evans. Sammy went with Julia Roberts, Tyler, the creator, and Michael Sarah. John went with Kylie Jenner, Austin Butler, and Steph Curry. 
TJ went with Nicole Byer, Rachel Bloom, and Allison Bree. All right, we have two more rounds to go, and these will be the December show. So a lot of eyeballs come in for the first show in December and then our Christmas show to wrap things up. So pressure is on for us to get our next 16 picks in. TJ, what do you think? This person has a slight SNL connection because they were on one of the best network sitcoms that we got of the 2010s. This person is a host. This person is a bit of a meme. This person is in the black community loved because he's one of the, you know, hardworking black fathers of television from the 2000s. This man is not who you expect to be. He, he, he knows who you expect him to be when you look at him, but then he gives you so much more when he makes you laugh, when he plays in Old Spice commercials, when he works with Andy Samberg, you know, wearing suspenders. I am picking Terry Crews to come in and host Saturday Night Live, somebody who deserves it, somebody who we know would be fantastic, and somebody, honestly, in an alternate universe, would have The Rock's career? Oh, all right. Interesting it's call there. I mean, Terry... Yeah, of course, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine just wrapped up last year. We got to talk about that on the podcast last summer. And Terry Crews, uh, just in so many so many hits. So it would be really funny to have him come and host the show. Did anybody else think of Terry Crews potentially for their board? Yeah, Haynes? Yeah, I mean, for all the reasons that TJ just said, that he's just... He, he's talented in so many different ways. Uh, it's kind of a shock that he hasn't hosted before. Obviously, everyone would love him. Everyone loves Terry Crews. Uh, it just seems like a natural pick. I am yeah. making my way downtown with my SNL picks. <laughs> Uh, I love that. Uh, That is really great. Um, Okay, so for my December, um, I want to pick somebody who I think uh, should have hosted SNL previously definitely has been talked about before. This is someone who's, uh, you know, a singer and actress, uh, won a ton of awards, and uh, was in one of the best uh, Marvel shows I think that has happened so far. Um, I'm gonna go with Haley Steinfeld to host at the beginning of December. I think that she would come in. I think she would do a fantastic job on the show. And I think after my uh, crazy November, we're going to start things off with a very fun December. So Haley Steinfeld is my pick for the beginning of the eighth round. Anyone else think of her for this draft? Yeah. TJ? Uh, I did. Yeah. I had Haley Steinfeld. She's, um, I mean, she's so charismatic. She's very funny. I always forget that she also has like a singing career. Like that's how good she, she, she can be, you could like have her in one completely different like level of like entertainment and enjoyment, like movies, television, um, music. And she, I mean, I feel like she just kind of captivates the screen. Uh, she's an incredible actress. And I mean, I don't know if SNL, I don't know if she needs SNL. I think SNL could, you know, could need her. She's yeah, a star. for sure. Okay, Sammy, over to you for your first show in December. I'm really excited about this one because I was looking at my list, my long list, and I'm like, wait, how has this person not been picked yet? Um, we talked about this person a lot last season. We thought it maybe would happen for a couple different things. Um, and even the season before, I feel like we talked about it as well, and it just never happened. Um, one of the funniest people who's kind of um, – you know, been in so many different things. Whenever she pops up, I'm just like, oh, wow, like she's in this movie, she's in this TV show. Like it just elevates it to a different level. Um, I know I've picked some Marvel people already, but it's kind of hard these days to not pick someone that's in Marvel. Uh, but she is going to be in the sequel to Knives Out, which comes out this fall. So the timing also works out pretty well. Uh, I'm picking Katherine Hahn. Yeah, this is definitely somebody that's come up on the podcast before Catherine Hahn that should have hosted SNL at some point. Was anybody thinking about Catherine Hahn for their December shows at all? Right, went out, yeah, went over a lot of people. Says, so, Bill, what do you think? Uh, would you have taken her? Without question. Uh, she should have hosted, as Sammy said earlier. Uh, yeah, I mean, she she's such a comic presence. Uh, she, she does such great, great work in all of the stuff that she does. Obviously, WandaVision. Uh, the underrated Mrs. Fletcher. Um, yeah. And I mean, of course she started an anchor man. Uh, she, she had such a great small part in that. So, and that's my favorite movie of all time. So great, great pick. Really good pick. Okay. Our 60th pick of the draft is coming up right now. Haskell, are you ready to make it? Yeah. I'm going to keep the Marvel train going. I've actually seen this person in two episodes of a show in one interview. I'm not familiar with her. 
at all. But to me, she just oozes charisma. And I'm excited to see how her career ends up. I've seen so little of her. I apologize. I, I don't actually know the correct pronunciation of her name. Uh, I'm going to go with Ms. Marvel's Iman Vellani. Yeah. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, she was just on The Tonight Show. I think this is a really fun pick. I'm actually having more fun watching Miss Marvel than I have watched other Marvel things in a long time. I'm very surprised with how excellent of a show this is. And I think she is a huge star. Um, she's Pakistani-Canadian, and she literally just tried out for the show. Huge Marvel fan and got the show. And she's so charismatic. And I think she's going to be a very, very big star. So um, I love the pick here from Haskell. Okay, Haynes, over to you for your first pick in December. First pick in December. This is a big one. We, I, I think we're running out of time for, for huge intros, but she deserves it, even though she's not going to get one from me right now. I'm just going to lay it out there. She's so charismatic. She's obviously been in SNL sketches before. Cardi B. Cardi B. Oh, okay, interesting. <laughs> TJ, huge reaction from you for the Cardi B pick. What do you think? That was my last pick. You that was that was that was it. You you got that's I mean she's hysterical, she's charismatic, and also would have added more melon into my list like I wanted to do. I I was like, no one is gonna do this. Haynes, how dare you? Well I I did not think anyone was gonna do that. Wow. That was that was it. I'm oh my gosh. I gotta scramble now. <laughs> All right. Well, that's how the draft works. Okay. So Hallie, interested to see where you will go with your pick in the eighth round to kick off your December shows. I have to, for this first December pick, I wanted to pick a super familiar face. Um, and I know it's a fairly recent departure and people are like, it's way too early. I don't care. This is selfish. And this is for me and my own happiness. I have to pick Beck Bennett. I've spent all of last season hoping for a cameo. I love Beck Bennett so much. And that's all I want to see. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is a great peg, Hallie. Honestly, uh, you know, like like we talked about the Kate McKinnon thing, I think this is like a little bit of time being removed. I think uh, the difference between what happened with Kate and AD and Kyle and Pete this season is we actually had a chance to say goodbye to them. We didn't really have a chance to say goodbye to Beth Bennett. So I sort of feel like this would be the time to come back and celebrate him and have some fun. And I hope that Beck Bennett gets a chance to host or at least cameo in the near future. So uh, this would be a very fun start. If I saw the Beck Bennett name pop up, I think we'd all be very excited about it. And it would be a lot of fun on the podcast that week okay bill over to you to kick off our christmas shows i've been going back and forth between two uh musicians who have been musical guests a kajillion times um i'm gonna go with someone who was actually cut from the finale of this season uh has never hosted i'm going with eminem wow all right that's a very interesting pick i think that eminem would be fascinating to see how he would do on the show and to see if his personality would come out or he would just be like in Eminem and Marshall Mathers character the entire time. I know Andy Hoagland would be very excited about this pick. Um, anybody else? Uh, let me get your opinion. Uh, Haynes, what do you feel about Eminem coming in? I had not thought about that, but fascinating is the word because obviously he is quite a performer, but I'm not sure I've ever seen him smile. Like the dude comes across real hard all the time. Um, so it is it is hard for me to imagine him like laughing at himself, but that doesn't mean he can't. And if we got to see him do that and just see this completely other side of this person, I mean, that would be really amazing. For sure. All right. In Bill Kenny's eighth round, he goes with eight mile. All right. Nicole Rovine, over to you for the Ooh. final pick in the eighth round to kick off the December show for you. So what's crazy here is I go right from my eighth pick to my final pick. So that's a yeah. lot of power. Um, I can really time that. Okay. So, okay. So this person is someone who has been, I know pretty much as long as I can remember, has been making me laugh in so many different ways on television shows when I was little, um, on social media a lot now, hosting red carpet events. It could be two people right now who I'm describing and I would lo love both of them to host. Um, exactly. I'm really describing two people to a T actually with the hosting. This, they, both of them have been kind of hosting red carpet things a lot. It's a new venture for both of them and as of a year or two, and both are so good at that. Um, so, but this person who I think is, she would be 
so good. Um, she also has a lot in the works with NBC with Jimmy Fallon. She's doing a, a big new project, a, a show. And like, I just think all the cards and the everything's going to add up for this to be like a super realistic pick. And also someone who has been making everybody laugh for so long and just like really deserves this moment to be like, yeah, everybody knows me. I make everybody laugh. She has like so many TikTok sounds that are her. And I don't think everyone even knows that they're her, you know, but they're her. And I just think she needs that moment and deserves that moment to be like, like, this is me. And literally she is such an icon of her generation, of my generation. I love her. I, I think this will happen. I'm manifesting it. I know it will happen. So Kiki Palmer. Okay. Kiki Palmer going to Nicole at the beginning of the eighth round. Yeah, that would be very fun to have Kiki Palmer and uh, also recently on The Tonight Show as well. So a lot of NBC connections. It's always fun to look at, see who's in the talk shows to potentially my host, SNL. So that rounds up our eighth round of the draft. And the next round is all Christmas shows. So this will be our final picks. We'll see if everyone feels satisfied with who is hosting their Christmas show. Nicole, let's kick off the final round of the draft. Who are you starting with? Oh my gosh. All right. This is so much pressure. Uh, oh, okay. So this isn't a traditional Christmas pick. It's it's not, but I don't care. I don't care at all because this person needs to host. Um, also, will I kind of like that she's hosting my Christmas episode and Aubrey's hosting my Halloween episode because they are collaborating on what I mentioned earlier. And so that is fun. Um, they both are hilarious and iconic and frequently impersonated. There's someone on the cast right now who does a great impression of the person I want to host. And I think they'll have a lot of fun. I also think she's someone for the Christmas episode who will be generous with her time and will want to, like, if there are, you know, if that is the time that Kate or 80 or someone pops back in, she's going to like give the time. She's really, that's her style. You know, she can make you laugh with one word or one face, one expression. So like, she's someone who's going to do a good job at a Christmas episode because she will not need all the time to herself to be funny. She can be so funny and then also really allow everyone else to shine. You know, if someone, if people are leaving at the Christmas episode and it's their last episode, like we thought Pete had a kind of goodbye style sketch or, you know, writers or things like that. I think she is someone who can capture us in an instant and also like in an, in an Anya Taylor joy kind of way that episode, we all had that feeling of she was so good. And also there was so much time for everyone else to be so good. So Jennifer Coolidge is hosting my Christmas episode. Yeah, that is a fun pick. Jennifer Coolidge was definitely on my board. Somebody I was considering as well. And we got that amazing Chloe Feynman impression of Jennifer Coolidge last season. Was Jennifer Coolidge a consideration for anybody else at the Christmas shows? Okay. Well, Nicole, you got your pick uh, regardless. Uh, Bill, over to you for your Christmas show pick. Well, I'm going with someone who was supposed to host 36 years ago before a writer's strike. Uh, his son hosted two years ago. Um, would be a fantastic host uh, because of his time at SCTV. Also, we would probably get some fantastic cameos in Catherine O'Hara uh, and others. I'm going with Eugene Levy. Amazing pick here from Bill Kenny for the Christmas show. Haskell seemed to be nodding along. Thoughts on the Eugene Levy coming in to uh, host for Bill? Yeah, uh, just a great pick for um, the Christmas episode. You know, I grew up with Eugene Levy in the American Pie franchise. Uh, so he feels sort of like America's dad. And, you know, what a better pick for, for the Christmas episode. Absolutely love it. All right, Hallie, uh, always great to hear your picks. You kick things, things off in December with Beck Bennett. Let's hear who will be wrapping up your fall. Okay, this is probably a crazy pick, but I was like, hmm, Christmas, it's known for like joy and peace and love. I was like, what if we had someone host who is known for nothing but sheer rage? Um, I think he's hilarious, whether he means to be or not. And, and I need Gordon Ramsay to host my Christmas episode. Oh my God. <laughs> that, was, that, was a, that was amazing. Fantastic. That was a crazy love to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, that was great. Uh, Gordon Ramsay. I don't believe Gordon Ramsay has ever appeared on SNL, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people who would be very excited to see what Gordon Ramsay would do on Saturday Night Live. That is a very fun pick from Hallie. All right. Haynes, you kicked off December with Cardi B. How are you going to wrap up your fall shows? Well, um, I can't believe this actually worked out because I did take quite a risk following the strategy that, uh, you know, actually, you know, Haskell, it was his demise, apparently. I, I wanted to save this 
person for the Christmas episode because she is a former cast member. And it's apropos because she's got a TV show right now. Uh, one of the people who was making everyone laugh when I was first getting into SNL in about 1997. Uh, and so perfect for the Christmas episode. I would love to have uh, Miss Anna Gasteyer on the show as the host. Yeah, that is a great pick. Is somebody that definitely I consider for my Christmas show as well. Did anybody else consider Anna Gasteyer for this draft at all? I did because of uh, I love her show American Auto. Um, I think she's fantastic in it, and I think it's one of my favorite new comedies after Abbott Elementary. So I was like, oh, she'd be a fantastic pick. I also love her as a frequent frequent guest on the Pyramid show that Michael Strahan hosts. The you know the the like third or fourth remake of that. She's very smart and funny, and she's a former Alphabet on in Wicked. So come on, like in addition to SNL, she just like she, she's cool. She does so much and. A lot of singing. It would be. It, I would love that. I love her voice. She's she's a great singer too. She is. Uh, would be great. Lots of cameos would be expected for that episode. Okay, Haskell, over to you for your Christmas show pick. All right, I'm going to go with somebody I know is on nobody's list right now. Okay, he is one of the best up and coming stand up comedians around, and he is a frequent guest on my favorite podcast of all time. If you want something done right, do it yourself. Hosting the Christmas episode is Andrew Haskell. Oh, wow. Okay, that was out of nowhere, but is totally acceptable to be drafted in this draft. Completely fair game. Andrew Haskell being host, hosting the Christmas show of Saturday Night Live for this year. We will see if the viewers decide if the listeners of the podcast would vote for an Andrew Haskell hosted Christmas episode. Actually the 69th pick in our draft is Andrew Haskell. So nice. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, I, right. I did I, I did not have Haskell on my list per se, but I had an idea that I didn't do where I was going to do an anyone can host and it would be the eight of us going on the Thanksgiving show <laughs> and, you know, kind of doing our mystical Spillman and seeing who gets to host. So, Bill, you do realize you would be the mystical Spillman of this group, right? Dude, <laughs> man, what? That's the second time you've yes. done that to me, man. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So, well, we went for dinner. We saw each other in person. Now we can have fun. Um, okay. <laughs> Sammy, <laughs> over to you. All right, I'm ready for the heat. It's Christmas, but it's cold, you know. It's cold outside. It's a, it's a festive time of year. Uh, this is someone who has a long history with the show. This is someone who more recently has had an interesting history with the show. Someone who has appeared many times. Someone who I, I view life as, as wrestling especially when it comes to celebrity culture. And I think a lot of things, you know, there, there's ups and downs in relationships. And a certain someone has left the cast now that I think, you know, if it were to ever happen, you know, maybe not right now, but, you know, a couple of months from now, we'll see. Um, and also this would create a, a streak now of billionaires hosting SNL. Um, we had Elon Musk, we had Kim Kardashian, and I am picking for the Christmas show. He has an album called Jesus is King. Perfect for Christmas. Yay. AKA Kanye West. Wow. This would be uh, definitely the ratings would be very strong for this one. Um, I don't know that Lauren Michaels would allow this to happen at this point, but in Sammy's universe, uh, yay is hosting Saturday Night Live for Christmas. And uh, the chat would love to know what you think about this pick, because this is a wild pick from Sammy. Obviously, Kanye West being one of the most frequent musical guests in the history of the show. Okay, uh, over to me for my Christmas pick. Um, I definitely uh, considered a lot of people. Uh, Haskell and Kanye West were not one. Were not some of them. So uh, those were fine for me. Uh, there was a few people I did think of, and I'll tell you guys one that I was really thinking of uh, very closely. But I'll get to that when we wrap things up. Um, but I decided ultimately I'm going to go with someone who's been a musical guest on the show, I believe, four times before. Uh, one of his bandmates has hosted SNL uh, in the last few years and really crushed it. And I'm going to go with Niall Horan to host my Christmas episode. I really think that there's going to be a lot of people who are very excited about Niall Horan hosted 
uh, hosting the show. There was people very excited about Harry Styles, obviously one of the biggest names in the entire world. I think we're going to get some of that, you know, One Direction fandom. And uh, I think the Instagram people will be excited about Niall Horan hosting the show. So um, I'm going to go with Niall Horan to come in and host my Christmas episode and play us some nice music for the uh, Christmas episode. So he will wrap up my December shows after Haley Seinfeld. All right, TJ, we are at the 72nd pick of the draft, the final pick. Who will host your Christmas episode after Terry Crews started things off? This was such a difficult pick. And um, this person is by no means a, a second tier pick because people would tune in to watch this. This person is inspiring. And this would be an episode where actually we would likely get the cast to really shine because they would kind of like come in and kind of help this person. But it'd be more good energy brought in. They've shown great energy when it comes to like coming in for the late night shows. So I'm going to pick Michelle Obama to be my Christmas show. Yeah, that, that seems like a great pick. And I was wondering if that would come up after Barack came up earlier. Having, having Michelle Obama come in to host the Christmas episode would be very exciting, obviously. We spoke about Barack earlier. Having Michelle come in, not as a duo with Barack, but now to host the Christmas episode uh, for TJ would be great. All right, that is your draft. So we have all of our teams here. And what we are going to do is we're going to post in the next few days. We don't want to do spoilers right away. We want to like give time for people to listen. We're going to post the draft results on our social media. We're going to ask that you guys who are watching and anyone who checks out the draft to vote for the team that they want to see host Saturday Night Live. Who do they think drafted the best? Who do they think uh, put together the best never hosted team? That will be a lot of fun. What we're going to do is we're going to go around to every single person on the panel. And I'm going to ask for two things as we wrap up our show today. One, pitch the listeners about why your team was the best team that you drafted today. And then also tell me one person that maybe you would have liked to take, but didn't get an opportunity to today. So we're starting with Elizabeth Olsen. Then we have Lil Nas X, Quinta Brunson, Aubrey Plaza to wrap up presumably October for Halloween, our scary witch queen, Aubrey. Then in November, Sadie Sink, Sasha Baron Cohen, and Nicholas Braun. And then December, Kiki Palmer and Jennifer Coolidge. And why you should vote for me? I mean, I think I have the coolest kids in town and coolest adults in town, really. Like Elizabeth Olsen, I'm so blessed I got to, to get her. I feel like she is, it's just her time. I think she deserves it. She's going to be so funny. I mean, I'm, I, she's going to be the best. And then Lil Nas X, perfect. Come on. she's He's, he's going to be so funny. I'm so out of stars. Um, Quinta Brunson deserved. It's her time. Aubrey Plaza for Halloween. Easily, even if I don't have the best team, which I do, easily the best Halloween pick on this whole thing. She is a witch and we have to celebrate that. Come on. Um, and then in November, we're tapping into the leaves and the fall and the nostalgia where we have our Sadie Sink. And then we're tapping in also to the political commentary and the honesty and the, the hard truths with Sasha Baron Cohen. So we're really doing everything in November that you need in November. So I feel like a vote for me is a vote for November. A vote for November is a vote for me. Come on. And then Nicholas Braun rounds it out because, you know, he he can kind of, he's that kind of guy. He could he could squeeze in anywhere and it would, it would make sense. He could make it work anywhere. And then December, Kiki Palmer is going to have so much, so, like so such an amazing like holiday spirit and vibe. Like she's a queen and she has been making us laugh for years. And then Jennifer Coolidge, what, what more needs to be said? It's her time. I, I have, a, my team is amazing. Thanks. Vote for me. Uh, anybody else, Nicole, that you wish you could have taken that you didn't get a chance to? Yes. Okay. So also with, with Stranger Things, there are so many kids there but um, who are so good. But Gaten Matarazzo, who plays Dustin, I almost picked instead of Sadie. But I just feel like Sadie November just would be too perfect not to choose. But I really wanted to pick him. And then I also – JoJo Siwa, I almost said. I, I think I think we could get her in December. I feel like it's going to be her time. Okay. Uh, Bill, please read out your team. Tell us why uh, people should vote for them and anybody you wish you could have taken. Well, my team starts off the year with Bob Odenkirk, uh, Renee Elise Goldsberry, and David Letterman. Um, uh, and then Will Smith coming in, bringing the heat and the clicks uh, at the end of the month. Uh, November is all women power with Vanessa Bear, Jen Psaki, and Amy Sedaris rounding it out. And then uh, December is going to be Eminem and the uh, unbelievable Eugene Levy. Uh, my team is got a great mix of comedy and politics and just some of the greatest of all time. Um, and yeah, that you definitely should vote for my team. Yeah. Anybody else, Bill, you wish you could have taken? 
So if, if we were allowed to pick groups, uh, my mine was going to be Mark McKinney headlining with the kids in the hall. Uh, I think we haven't had five hosts uh, on one episode since uh, season nine or ten. Uh, I think that would be just such a great way for Mark McKinney to come back, kind of mend some fences with Lauren, and to have uh, the, the other members of that troop that uh, have come back roaring strong this summer. So that would have been my other pick. Yeah, very fun. Uh, Hallie, here to defend your crown. Can you read out your team and tell the listeners why they should vote for you once again? I started off super strong, in my opinion, with Nick Kroll right off the bat, one of the funniest people on this planet, and then keeping it up with Stephen Colbert, and then to Zendaya, and then to Taika Waititi. Just it never stops getting even better. Um, then to Doja Cat, then to Tim Robinson then to Beanie Feldstein, and then for my December shows, I had the return of my beloved Beck Bennett and Gordon Ramsay for my Christmas show. And not only do I have a consistently hilarious group, I have such a variety from stand-up comedians to a chef to musicians to actors to directors. I have almost everything in there. And you cannot tell me that Gordon Ramsay hosting a Christmas episode would not be the funniest thing on earth. I would love to spend my Christmas episode watching Gordon Ramsay like yell at kids or something. Would be very funny. <laughs> um, Hallie, anybody else you wish you could have taken today? Yes. I wish that I, with the whole Stranger Things thing, going back to that, I almost took Joe Curie. Joe Curie is so loved by everyone who's ever seen Stranger Things, and I think he would do so well with the cast. Okay. I think if All one right. of our picks, if if Gaten hosted, we'd see Joe, and if Joe hosted, I think we'd see Gaten. I hope. I think we would. Over to Haynes. Haynes, I'm going to ask you to tell me why your team was the best and anybody that you wish you could have taken. So, listen, I think my season or half of the season has a great balance of, you know, you've got, I think, longtime underappreciated character actors like Stephen Root and Brian Cox, obviously getting a lot of credit right now. You've got the biggest names in the business with Beyonce and Cardi B. Um, And you've got people that just plain deserve it. Great actors like Gene Smart, um, who've just been around for so long doing such great work. I feel this is a very well-rounded uh, set of hosts. And I think it has the right ebb and flow for this half of the season. I think I was incredibly lucky to get a former cast member on the Christmas episode. To me, I couldn't be happier with this uh, set of hosts. And I think people should definitely vote for me. Yeah. And Haynes's team, just to read it out, the whole team was Gene Smart, Stephen Root, Beyonce, Eric Andre, Ewan McGregor, Brian Cox, Ricky Gervais, Cardi B, and then Anna Gasteyer. Haynes, was there anybody else you wish you could have taken today, but didn't get the opportunity to? There's a million people, but if I if we just had one more round, I might go with a another big wild comedian uh, who just had a new special come out, Cat Williams. Nice, nice pick, Haskell. Over to you. Why don't you read your team that you drafted and tell the listeners why they should take it? Yeah, so we got Barack Obama, Carol Burnett, Jordan Peele, Kate McKinnon, Keanu Reeves, Mindy Kaling, Chris Evans, Iman Vellani. And Andrew Haskell. I mean, let's face it. I got the most famous name that would ever host SNL and Barack Obama uh, and the least famous name ever in myself. Um, But really, I mean, it's all the fans. A vote for me hosting SNL is really a vote for our whole community. So I don't know. Something to think about. But I feel like I do have some huge names that would really tip the scale. I got some stars of yesteryear. I got some up-and-coming stars. I have an alumni. I have what I think is some really great comedic minds. Um, so I, I really think I ran the gambit and, and everything there. Um, hope you guys vote for me. The one name, interesting enough, the very first name that I wrote down with this uh, was Brad Pitt. And I actually texted you, John, and, and, and asked to clarify to make sure he is not considered the official host of that uh, at-home episode where he appeared in the cold open as Dr. Fauci. Uh, so I wrote him down. He was my first name written down. And then I got to Obama. And then as the draft went on, it just never really made sense with the what I was kind of creating. He, he, he almost slid in it for Keanu Reeves and Chris Evans. But um, I think he's a great personality and would make a great host. 
Yeah, for sure. Definitely considered him as well. And I think that uh, Brad Pitt is not officially a host of one of these at home episodes uh, by NBC doesn't consider him the official host. So we wouldn't either in that case. So he was eligible to be drafted today. All right, Sammy, over to you. Let's get your team and why you think that people should vote for them. Yes. So my team starts out with the season premiere, Florence Pugh. Then we have Christian Bale, then Billy Eichner. Finally, the return, or following that, the return of Bobby Moynihan back to SNL. Then Julia Roberts, Tyler, the creator, Michael Sarah, Catherine Hahn, and of course, Kanye West. So um, here is why you guys should pick my team. I mean, you look at this on paper and it, this screams, how have these people not hosted SNL yet? These are, you know, some of the, the best actors that are around right now. Um, you know, with Florence Pugh, obviously Christian Bale's an Oscar winner. Uh, Billy Eichner is someone who is so funny, um, who I think, uh, you know, would be interesting to see on SNL. Uh, like I alluded to before, the, the return of Bobby Moynihan would be um, just a really cool homecoming episode, similar to the Sudeikis and Will Forte episodes we got last season. Julia Roberts, another one that's just like, how has this not happened yet? Um, and now I know I'm just running through on my list again, but, um, uh, Tyler, the creator, he has, you know, sketch comedy experience. And I think a lot of people, you know, in the mainstream don't know that. So I think he would be really fond of the show. Michael Sarah is one of my favorite people in Hollywood and is in my favorite comedy of all time. Catherine Hahn is amazing. Uh, you know, there's not much more I can say about that. And, you know, Kanye, you know, it's like, I don't know. I, there have been controversial figures that have hosted the show in recent years. Um, this one obviously hits closer to the home with SNL. Um, but, you know, I do think there are times where he can be very, very funny. And, um, you know, if they are able to squash the beef backstage behind the scenes, you know, like he did with Drake last year, they squashed the beef. Um, so, you know, if him and Lauren could somehow squash the beef and with Pete, I don't know. When you're voting in the poll, and you're like, yeah, maybe I don't want to vote because of that reason. I mean, you'll watch that episode. I know you will watch that episode. You, you know, you're, you're not going to turn off the TV for that episode. So um, ratings wise, I think that would be a big hit as well. Um, and someone who I would have picked, um, there's a couple people on my list. Uh, ben Schwartz is someone who I was really considering picking. Um, I think that could happen sometime in the near future. Uh, Nathan Fielder is a new show coming out this summer. I think that would be a very interesting episode of SNL. Um, and if we're on the Stranger Things kick, I think Maya Hawk would also be pretty fun on SNL. And I have both of these two on the list. So I just really quickly, Leslie Mann and Maude Apatow, obviously not hosting together, but both separately are people who I think uh, would have a lot of fun on the show. So, 100%. All right, over to me for my picks and uh, kick things off in October with Tom Cruise, Julia Garner, Millie Bobby Brown, and Tom Holland. And obviously Tom Cruise, someone who I think should have hosted the show a very long time ago and uh, really just easing your way in with some comfortability, some name recognition, things people know. And then we got three young up and rising stars of Hollywood with Julia Garner, Millie Bobby Brown, and Tom Holland. I think it's just going to be a really fun October. November, I got a little bit more experimental, but there's nothing wrong with that on Saturday Night Live. It creates something for us to talk about. We have fun. We get to see not every, everyone's going to be a great SNL host, but it could be a very fun episode. So we got Kylie Jenner, Austin Butler, and then world champion Steph Curry coming in to round out November. Then in December, I think, you know, two hosts that I think that just people are just genuinely going to be happy with around the holidays. I think Haley Steinfeld is amazing. Uh, just incredible actress, incredible singer. Uh, Niall Horan, I think would be very fun coming in from One Direction and, you know, uh, performing perhaps. And then also uh, being in sketches. I just think it's going to be a lot of buzz for that Christmas Nile episode. Um, so that is my team. And of course, you know, listeners, if you like the SNL network, you obviously like John Schneider. So how could you not vote for my team? Okay. <laughs> TJ. Oh, oh, sorry. Actually, let me just say uh, people who I think that we should have, uh, that I should have picked, but didn't um, have to say, I did think about picking Morgan Freeman at some point. Uh, I just thought, you know, somebody who's never hosted the show before, I thought it'd be a lot of fun to get him into the show uh, as well. And then the one that I was really struggling with at Christmas, I know it's Keenan Thompson's 20th season coming up on the show. I thought it would be kind of fun to have Kel Mitchell come in and host the show while Keenan's there. I think that was like my other consideration for the Christmas pick. And obviously others on the board, uh, Stephen Amell, one of my favorites of all time, but um, you know, there's a lot in there, so we'll save that for another podcast. Uh, TJ, over to you. Let's take it home with your team and why people should vote for them. 
Okay, so for my team, the right team, we have powerhouses. We have stars. We have writers. We have excellent points of view. We have funny-ass people here on the TJ team. We start the season with the queen. We start the season with two pieces of royalty. Meryl Streep, and then right after that, Leonardo DiCaprio, a queen and a king hosting back-to-back. People that have never graced the S- well, actually, Leo has graced the SNL stage, but people that have never hosted, that we love to watch on the screen, that have shown their acting chops time and time again, that have shown their Huber chops time and time again. You mean to tell me you're not going to, like, at least be like, well, what, what did Meryl Streep do on that episode? You mean to tell me it's not going to be in the echelon of high-tier SNL? Come on now. Then... I'm bringing, I'm bringing in the youth demographic because, all right, yeah, Mayor, Mayor, Meryl Streep and Leo, Leo, they're icons, sure. Actually, let me, let me go through the list and I'll explain. But Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio, Z-Way, Bo Burnham, that's rounding out my October. Then Thanksgiving, we have Nicole Byer, Rachel Bloom, Allison Brie, that's my November. And then for my December, we have Terry Crews and the first, former First Lady, Michelle Obama. Now, like I already explained Meryl and Leo why they'd be fantastic. But maybe you're like, I don't know who these people are. I've I've never even seen The Devil Wears Prada. Actually, that's me. I've never seen The Devil Wears Prada. I've only seen Don't Look Up, but Meryl Streep on the hug bridge he is. But like maybe you're like, I don't know who these people are. Maybe you're thinking, I need somebody youthful. I got you. I, I Gen Z and young millennials, I got you. Because you want to know who's coming in to host? Z-Way and Bo Burnham. People that speak to the youthful demographic. Granted, Bo Burnham is turning 30, so you know that's He's getting up there, but still, like he's been thirty. He's thirty-one. You know, I know how old he is. Um, I've listened to the song a million times. Um, <laughs> okay. but like with that, but young people love Z Way. Young people love Bo Burnham. We're gonna get the young millennials, and we're gonna get Z Way with both of them. Um, then we have somebody. We have like three television. I'm, I'm gonna get back to Rachel Bloom, but we have three television powerhouses. I just hold on four fingers. Three television powerhouses in Allison Brie, Terry Crews, and Nicole Byer. People who are hilarious in their own right. They're the type of actors that when they do a cameo or they do a guest spot, you're like, oh, it's that person. And every single time they crush it. Nicole Byer has her hands in so many different things. You think she doesn't have time to do SNL? Of course she does, because she apparently this woman has clones or something, because she's able to do every damn job in Hollywood, and she could do this one. Um, Rachel Bloom, that's a personal pick. Creates this girlfriend has an excellent point of view, and Rachel Bloom herself is just an incredibly talented and fantastic person uh, to host. And um, honestly, Michelle Obama, honestly, I think that'd be a nice tender-hearted episode. It'd be like sentimental, like when the Muppets came into cameo during Jason Segel's episode. It'd be nice and sweet. It'd be, it'd be almost like a nice cozy type of episode to have Michelle Obama there is the cast honestly gets to have fun and you think the cast isn't going to be having fun getting to meet and interact with the first lady for an entire week you mean to tell me that the energy of that christmas show i feel like Stephen a smith you mean to tell me um that the energy of that christmas show isn't going to be absolutely like uplifting and light like when jimmy fallon hosts a christmas episode it's going to be incredible and you're going to be glad that you picked my team also the diversity because we're highlighting you know uh, people with melanin and, and lots of black women are on my team. So, you know, just saying, you want to be progressive. <laughs> For sure. TJ, anyone you wish you could have taken that you didn't? Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, lots of <laughs> Lil Nas X pull one out for him. But uh, anyone for someone that wasn't named, uh, Tracy Ellis Ross was very close to being my pick. I mean, she's the woman has been working forever. She absolutely deserves it. She even mentions wanting to have done it uh, in a Hollywood Reporter review recently that I think she's still be a great pick now, honestly, for this upcoming season. Uh, Kristen yeah. Bell, Nick Offerman, I don't think was said. I don't think no, Nick no. Offerman was said. Uh, Ali Wong, and uh, this might be a little odd, Denzel Washington, another great who has never... I almost put him on my list as another great, but I, I went against it. Oh, and Henry Winkler. Um, I mean, yeah. he, he said Probably. he wouldn't do it, but he would do it now. So... Yeah. yeah, that'd be that'd be really great. Uh, Stephen A. Smith was actually on my list as well. He would have been a uh, very funny oh, show. But yeah. I would watch that yeah. one. I would I would watch the Stephen A. Smith hosted one. He's hilarious. 
Okay, so that does it for the never hosted draft. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this very long, fun super fan takeover over the summer. I'm sure there'll be another super fan takeover again before season 48 starts. So uh, let's talk about what is happening here on the SNL network. And obviously, we've been doing these career retrospectives. So we've gone and talked about already Kate McKinnon, Pete Davidson, and AD Bryant's career retrospective. We took a little bit of break for the 4th of July weekend to put out this special podcast. And next week, we will be back to wrap things up with kyle mooney's podcast so we'll be talking all about kyle mooney next monday night so make sure to join us for that one and if you missed it a couple weeks back we spoke to chris red on the snl network what a great time that was thanks to chris for joining us it's a short podcast where i had to you know i spoke to chris red for about 15 20 minutes uh with one of our great listeners dave standish and it was just really fun to get to hear from chris about his season 47 and uh you know he's already writing sketches for season 48 so really looking forward to talking more about that uh, as things come and hopefully getting to interview a few more people from Saturday Night Live over the summer. All right. Thank you to all of our panelists for joining us today. Nicole, where can the listeners reach out to you? Um, you can find me at Nicole Rovine everywhere, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and then of course, SNL Network Socials. We're doing so much this summer, almost as much as you know during the year. I feel like we have so much exciting stuff that we're posting. So just stay tuned with all that. And we we appreciate all the interest over the summer. It's it's nice that that our community is is excited to to chat just like we usually do. Hundred percent. All right, Bill. Where can listeners reach out to you? Thanks for having me, John. Uh, great to see everyone uh, in the middle of uh, our hiatus from SNL. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at bklove seventy three. Hundred percent, Bill. Thanks a lot. Always great to talk to you over the summer. Hallie, really excited to have you more and more on the podcast and get to hear your SNL opinions. Looking forward to that all season long in season 48. Where can the listeners find you? You can find me on Twitter at Oops, it's Hallie and on TikTok at Sad Mall Cop. Don't ask me why. That's just the first thing I thought of. Um, and yeah, I'm so happy to get to be on the podcast. So fun. Yeah, very, very fun. Haynes, tell the listeners where they can reach out to you and anything you want to plug. Yeah, you can always find me um, on Twitter at SNL has a cast and Instagram at Kandrew Attitude. It has been amazing being here with you all. I love to see everyone. Just so great to talk with everyone. Just love being here. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Haynes, thank you for joining us today. Um, Haskell, always amazing to get to hear from you. I know you're headed off to your honeymoon tomorrow. So uh, in the meantime, where can the listeners figure out everything that you are doing and anything you would like to plug? Yeah, uh, on Twitter and Instagram, at Andrew E. Haskell. Uh, and at the end of the summer, I will be at the Portland Maine Comedy Festival. So for all of our New England listeners, come out to the festival, and I'd love to see you there. For sure, for sure. We will see you also hosting the Christmas episode this coming season. Uh, Sammy K., great to hear from you this summer. Where can the listeners find everything you got going on? Uh, this episode was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm glad that you have the stamina to host these draft episodes because it's it, it's, it's an undertaking for sure. But uh, you guys can find me at that Sammy K on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, and uh, I'll see you. Or I'll see you next time. For sure, TJ. Where can the listeners reach out to you? What is going on in your life with your podcasting? Uh, yeah, shout, again, shout to you, John, for hosting these meaty, meaty podcasts you guys have been doing the past few weeks. They've been some great listens. Um, I have a 15-minute podcast. Well, it's a 15-ish minute podcast. It's called Rabbit Trail. That's R-A-B-I-D. John has been on it. Nicole has been on it. Been on it. I have some other friends in the SNL network. Matter of fact, if you're listening to this uh, on July 4th, uh, which is the day we're dropping, correct? Yeah. Uh, Sean Grant joined us for an episode to talk about cookouts uh, in the week prior. You might have heard us talk about Monster Hunter with a friend of our streamer, uh, Consigneros. And then the following week uh, on the 11th, we're talking to talk about red flags. And then we're going to wonder why people like podcasts with uh, a wonderful friend and listener of the show, uh, Manette Marathi. Um, If you want to talk to me, you can uh, if you want to actually find our podcast, you can find it on you know, anywhere you get podcasts, but you can also reach out to us at We Are Rabbit Trail. That's R A B I D on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you want to find me, TJ, you can look me up at King Compliment on Instagram and TikTok. 
That is awesome. Can't wait to hear all of those shows, TJ. And if you've been listening to our podcast for over three hours, you know where to find them. You know where to find us on social media. You know where to find us at the podcast. Just make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We really do appreciate that over the summer. And if you are interested in becoming a patron of the SNL Network, you can do so at patreon.com slash the SNL Network. We just launched our patron Discord. So we have all of our patrons and a bunch of our podcasters chatting every single day about Saturday Night Live in our private Discord server. So make sure to join us if you want to be a part of the conversation we help plan and produce podcasts in the discord so it's really fun to get involved a little bit more with everything we're doing here at the snl network so uh you're welcome to join us at patreon.com slash the snl network all right for all of our amazing podcasters that joined us today on this celebratory fourth of july weekend podcast we appreciate all of you thanks for the listeners who stuck around all the way through we will see you next time everybody have a good one (laughs) 